Good evening. Welcome to episode 34, I want to say, of The Real Wrestling Show. It's something like that. We've been doing them for quite a while now. Um, we're The Real Wrestling Show for The Real Wrestling Show. A E W. And um, we're in quarantine at the moment still, obviously with the uh, COVID-19, which is a little bit shit. My man, Dawsey's in the TV screen. Say hi, Dawes. What's happening, people? Um, yeah, we're basically going to do what we do every week. Um, we're going to talk Dark, talk Dynamite, talk the news. Uh, we're also going to discuss BTE this week because there's a couple of matches in there. Did you see him? Did you see him? You see him? Yeah, you definitely seen him. Um, yeah, there's a lot of news this week, obviously. Um, we'll touch on it quite short. Basically, WWE have just... Bribe the, pre bribe the president of the United States and then release a load of wrestlers. So, yeah, it's big news at the moment. Yes. Yeah? Also, juices. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Drinks. Mike, Mike, uh, Kyoto, is it? Yeah. 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 1989, man, he was here. Yeah. Terrible, man, terrible. But yeah, um, yeah, so my name's Big Z. My man's name's Dorsey. We're going to chat. Sure. We're going to chat what we do every week. See if we can keep you entertained for a couple of hours. You know, it is what it is. Bit rough around the edges. Drink a few beers, smoke a few dubs, and it is what it is. Well, Dorsey, as you can see, drinks piss. Well, what? Hey, no. if I, there was a time in my life that if I pissed, it'd still be beer anyway. <laughs> yeah. What was that last week on, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but starting off with Dark. AEW Dark. AEW Dark. Now, uh, we're, we're doing it this way still because Dark obviously comes after the last week's show. So, then we add BTE. So, uh, we'll we'll discuss it that way. So, yeah, um... Actually on first, but... It was on first, but this comes after the actual show. Well, it yeah. doesn't... It Technically, it doesn't at the moment because where everything's up in the air and it's all pre-recorded, they're just chopping and changing it. It's like the main event yeah. of Dynamite this week, you know? So, but um, anyway... The first match of the evening and the only match of the that, evening. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I was like, shit. I no, missed watch the <laughs> I've, I've been mission, mishmashing all my notes together, like, do you know what I mean? So it's a bit, uh, bit awkward this week. The, the yeah. one week when I was doing my notes, I started off on half a page and it just haven't gone back to normal ever since. The only event of the um, Yeah, I thought this was a good match. I thought it was a good match. Yeah. Like, it's quite comedy. Yeah. Quite comedy, but Sean Spears does comedy really well. Billy Gunn does comedy quite well. Yeah. But there was some, yeah. you know, there was a couple of hard hitting moments. Yeah. I thought it was um, well matched. Uh, names for a dark as well. You know, they're two pretty decent neck sized names. You know. Yeah, and that's that. And that started off from just um, a little bit of a shove outside when Sean Spears was fighting. Uh, who was he fighting? Chris Sab K uh, Kip Sabian the other week but anyway he went outside and pushed Billy Gunn that's how that rivalry started but yeah uh, good good matchup like um, yeah it was, it was a good match like, like I said it was, it was a bit of comedy um, Billy Coase and Spears down was quite funny where he just yeah. he just wouldn't allow him to like just kept on like closing him out into the corners and stuff like that and like get him really in his personal space and shit I thought that was quite yeah. funny uh, Spears sneaking around the ref a lot like a pussy yeah. It's a nice hat that is, bro. It's a banging hat, isn't it? It's a banging hat, yeah. Shop AEW. Shop Um, I did find entertaining, but a bit weird in a match, Sean Spears doing that ass man taunt. <laughs> yeah. Like, like that far, like from as far as where you are to me now, in his face. Like, and it's like, what are you doing? What are you yeah. doing, like? What are you doing? Um... Yeah, one thing I did laugh at as well. Did you hear Cody on commentary? Where he said that? Oh, look at Billy Gunn, he's massive. He's just getting bigger as you look at him. He's just getting bigger as we watch him. I, I was creasing that, I don't know why. It's not even that funny, though. <laughs> but I was creasing. Sean Spears, George Axe from Austin on the outside. Mm. Yeah, and he's going, I'm harmless, I'm harmless, I'm harmless, I'm harmless, I'm harmless. Uh, Sean Spears mincing around in a ring, man. I, again, that was kind of like just after he was like sneaking behind the ref and stuff. And Billy yeah. Gunn just give it all that. 
Boosh. Have it. Clock him square in the face, mate. That was awesome. A real good way to be like, come on, man, be serious now. You know? Yeah. I thought it was very cool. Uh, Spears block. Go on. Him Billy bosses him about there, didn't he? That, yeah, that's what I was on about, where he, he literally just closes him down, like, yeah. gets right in his face, don't don't give him any space, anything like that. Like, because Billy Gunn, when he, like, stretches his arms out, he touches each corner of the ring. Do you know what I mean? So it's hard to get past that. Yeah. Because his arms so, are massive, man. See, he's deceiving on screen. He's one of the biggest guys, like. Yeah. He doesn't look it. He is, like. Yeah. But he can literally touch from corner to corner of the ring, man, when his arms are stretched out. He's that fucking yeah. big. Crazy, man. Crazy. Uh, Sean Spears blocking the rope sling over by Billy Gunn. He was standing yeah. on the outside on the apron, and Billy Gunn went to grab the ropes to flick him over, and he went, ha And then Billy Gunn just gave it all, just hit him, man. Yeah. Another nice, quite, unique, quite unique, I found that. Yeah, it was, it went well with the match, the comedy of it. Yeah, yeah, excellent, man. Um, Spears did a nice Mongo-style DDT. Yeah. Real yeah. slow DDT. Yeah, accommodators pointed that out as well, didn't they? Yeah. Mongo style! Mongo, Mongo style! Did you see, um, did you see Dasha? When, uh, when Sean Spears was over in the corner by her. Yeah, he, knocks, he gets knocked out the ring and then he puts his lap on it, his head on a lap, did he? I don't know if he put his head on a lap. I thought he yeah. just like... Oh, did he? Ah, <laughs> uh, right, see, because I, I thought like he might have smelt a B.O. or something like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Honestly, because she was like... He was just there with his head on a lap like that. She was pulling like proper faces like... <laughs> I didn't notice that. Well, <laughs> well, when, well then Sean Spears, well then Sean Spears. Um, oh, Sean Fingers. Sean Fingers. Sean Spears giving the crowd the finger as well. There was no one there. It's like he was literally doing that. And there was nobody there. Yeah, but they've all been doing that, haven't they? Yeah, but to people that are there. Like MJF, MJF did it the other day, like, you know, when there was nobody there. Or yeah. whenever it was. But it, it was just... That was just weird, like... <laughs> to me strange strange um, that face breaking as well from Sean Spears to Billy Gunn yeah where he um, basically like an eat the feet sort of thing but with his knee yeah the way his the way his neck like detorted like that I thought that was pretty cool I got a moment in the match it was the only moment in the match for me I think oh no two um, <laughs> Spears give the old DX sign to, to Billy Gunn yeah. Bit of sign of disrespect, but again, fitted the comedy a aspect of the match. Uh, front face pendulum side slam by Billy. Yeah. That was nice, right. that was. That was um, End of Days. Yeah, that's End of it. Days by Baron Corbin. I'm glad someone's using that in AEW now, man, because he's, he's so righteous with that. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? It's like, oh, I'm, I'm God's greatest because i got this cool move. It's like, well, it's not that great, is it? Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you're a big guy. It can only really be done by big guys to smaller guys. It's quite hard. Yeah. To, it's quite hard to do it to a bigger guy or someone your same size. Do it to Kane, right? See, yeah. So good. You, their feet hook on the floor, see. So. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, that was the finisher, wasn't it? Oh no. End oh, of. Billy hits um, a weak famous famouser. Yeah, end of days from Billy, then the famouser. Uh... That's what I got. The C4. Yeah. I thought it was a, like I said at the beginning, I thought it was a decent match. Nothing, yeah, nothing. Yeah, good match for, nah, for three. I suppose it had to be, though, because it was the only match on it. Yeah. Nothing, uh, nothing spectacular in the match. But, um, yeah, decent, though. Decent, decent watch. Uh, Sean Spears, man of the match. Yeah, Sean Spears wins, and Sean Spears, man of the match. I went with one moment. I went with two moments. Uh... Yeah. You help me piece as we go. Yeah, yeah. And that's the end of Dark. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was the end of Dark. Um, wasn't anything spectacular this week, but we do have some more matches. We do have some more. If I can just find the fucking bastards. Uh, this week on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of the week, we had B the Elite. B, B, the Elite. Uh, B, 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 B,
two matches on Monday, and we had one match on Tuesday. Yeah, they're not. Um, they're not, nothing serious, I don't think. But we still we still catalog it because they are matches at the end of the day, you know. It's still AEW. It's still AEW. So uh, yeah. So do you wanna do you wanna kick it off, brother? Yeah. First off, we had a uh, which was named the squash match. <laughs> did you did you count the rules? Uh, <laughs> uh? Did you catch the rules of the squash match? It's three minutes long. Yeah. That was about it. <laughs> three minutes long. Um, jobbers can only do one offensive move. <laughs> uh, and there must be some sort of Steiner brother finish, Dudley boys finish, uh, or like the Nasty boys or something like that. It has to be a good tag team finish to finish the match. Which, the match was perfect. In my eyes. Do you know what I mean? So we had SCU! SCU! This is high risk again. T by risk. Yeah. And Scorpio Sky was the referee. Yes. I wasn't biased at all, though. I, I didn't. Like, I, I heard this somewhere that SC, uh, Scorpio left SCU for the duration of this match. He was a free agent, he was on his own, single competitor. So there was yeah. no bias. There was no bias in that, sir. <laughs> None whatsoever, like not even the fast counts. <laughs> but um, yeah, SCU first double team hit the uh, one guy in the nuts. I don't know, I can't remember which one of them it was, but he went when he went over uh, and he fell on the floor. Kaz was laying on his back with his knees like kind of up as like a like a blocking move for a like a frog splash or whatever. And as the guy come down, he just bang straight on his nuts. Um, slow count from the bias ref. Very slow count, man. When um, I think Kaz Kaz was being pinned. Yeah. And that's all she wrote. SCU death yeah. device finish. Yeah. Doomsday device. SCU with the win. Kaz man of the match for me. Kaz man of the match. CD man of the match for me. Any moments? Nope. Nope. None for me either. Uh, moving on swiftly. Now, referee in the last match was Scorpio Sky, but Scorpio Sky is now in this match because it's all in BT and literally they're all filming it. However many wrestlers are there, they're filming it, editing it, fighting in it. That's what's going on. So this match... Velvet, you can see him. <laughs> exactly, yeah, you can see him on the hard cams and everything. Um, this match is a triple threat match. And it was Scorpio Sky, Peter Avalon versus Brandon Cutler. Yeah, continuing on the storyline of Brandon and Peter Avalon not having a victory. Yeah. Now, before this match happened, <laughs> before this match happened, I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> we all knew what was going to happen. It was going to be a double pin all the way from the beginning. You know? And that's what happened. Yeah. Um, Surprising, though, my man of the match in this, considering Scorpio Sky was in it. Um, the clothesline spot from Avalon Cutter, Avalon double crossing Brandon, where they, where he goes, oh come on, we'll we'll like bounce against the ring, and as he bounces, he just clotheslines him out. I thought that was a nice, unique spot. Yeah. A uh, nice fast-paced match. Quite a few nicely executed moves from everyone. Good commentary as well. Yeah. I thought. Uh, Scorpio swinging net breaker it was quite nice. Yeah. Double pin finish. Yeah, the uh, double TKO. Well, double. the TKO on to Avalon catches the TKO and lands on Brandon Cutler. So the guy gets the double pin. Mm -hmm. I went with uh, Scorpio Sky, man of my match. I went with Brandon Cutler. Really? I thought he was real good in this. Um, any moments? Yep. I had one. One moment toss. Uh, after the match, Avalon Brandon moan about losing again. <laughs> Whiny little bitches. Whiny little bitches. And that was the end of the Monday show. There was a lot more on BTE if you haven't catched it, caught it, whatever the plural is. Um, yeah, we're not on anything else we're just literally touching on the matches everything else watch yourself yeah watch yourself but it was a very funny show the whole, all of the shows were very funny this week um, so moving on to the second day 
of being the elite. The elite. The, the, the elite. elite. Do, 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 do. Um, it was an under the limit battle royale. Which there were rules for this too, but I cannot remember for the life of me. I'll also go remember is his job is can come in two at a time. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, the order that they come in was Kaz, Scorpio, Christopher Daniels, Matt Jackson, Team High Risk, Peter Avalon, Brandon Cutler, Nick Jackson. Um, CD caught his hand in a rope when he was eliminated. See? Yeah. Got his hand as he went over the top, the ring, the you know, as the ropes go around. Yeah. Locked his hand in. You know, don't, hopefully he's not injured or nothing. Uh, Peter Avalon flying off the top rope, everyone moves. <laughs> that was funny. Funny as fuck. Once, as soon as Christopher Daniels was eliminated, he was straight onto the hard camera. Yeah. That was filming from the distance, so that, you know, like the box cam or whatever. I thought. Did you put that together the ring? Huh? Did you Brandon had to get in the ring or Nick or whoever else? Someone had to get in, didn't they? So. No, that was Avalon's bit. But, yeah. as, but as soon as CD was out, he went up to the hard camera, which, which was up the steps, around the top, and it was like up about eight foot off the floor. Yeah. Um, what have we got? Uh, Avalon jumps out. Yeah, Avalon executes himself from the ring after coming in. Yeah. And then, then he takes a camera from Peter Avalon. Yeah. And then Avalon go, uh, Cutler goes in and is knocked straight back out. With, within like <laughs> yeah, within seconds, like, like um, and then he wouldn't give the camera back to Cutler, but then Cutler got a camera. Then Nick takes on Sky in an arcade basketball game. Which <laughs> 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 that was fucking wicked, mate. So just to get this right, during a wrestling match on a tennis court, two of the wrestlers just go and have a basketball game. Which I don't know if you use a tennis court as a wrestling ring ish. ish. Yeah. But he whips it into the, the net in. Yeah. Oh, that was uh, what's it? Avalon, wasn't it? Yeah. Chucks him into the uh, tennis net. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else we got? We got anything else? Matt V's Nick was the last two in there. Yeah. Dude. Dude. Literally, right? I can't even see your mouth anymore now. <laughs> Any chance of like. Scooching up in the air a little bit, or moving your camera forward a bit, or like tilting it forward. I know we adjusted it earlier. Yeah, that'll do. That's better. Lean forward. Yeah, that's better. You were just proper off the camera, I was all. No worries. That shit happens all the time. That's uh, what I did in an old school battle royal tactic. Say again. As hiding under the ring, old school battle royal tactic. Yeah, yeah, because that, that's the thing. I had Mac and Matt and Nick left. Shit, yeah. Kaz still is not out. Yeah, that's what I got right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then he was knocked out straight away. <laughs> I didn't notice him go out at all, see, because when he did the basketball bit, the missus said to me, was she was not. like, or oh, the commentary might have said, and the missus said, they said, oh, he must have been knocked out when the cameras were not. Yeah, because Kaz is eliminated. That's why I, I read it. Yeah. So, all right, then Matt Nick last two in the ring, and then Kaz popped up from into the ring, and I was like, ah, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, shit, we're making a break that too. Um, yeah, Kaz still in it. Then he's out. Yeah. German suplex onto the mat. Two mat. Uh, German yeah, on the apron. Sorry, go on. On the ring apron, wasn't it? Yeah. And then uh, Kaz still in it. Yeah. And then Nick gets to pick the match. Yeah. Showcase of the Immortals. Episode. BCE 200. Yeah. Big milestone, man. Yeah. Big, big milestone. Um, yeah, so basically, he's, Nick Jackson chose to fight his brother, Matt Jackson, at BTE 200. In a... Showcase of the Immortals. In, um, in a match that can go anywhere. Doesn't matter, wherever. They, they fight anywhere. But it's yeah. going to be in uh, it's going to be in Nick's back garden because they're in quarantine at the moment. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty much all they're going to do. They're going to fight on a tennis court. All tennis. Huh? All during the match, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but hope hopefully all the wrestlers will be there and shit like that. Do you know what I mean? 
Say again. Running, running from the kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think it'll be a good little spectacle, man. Yeah. A good spectacle. Right then. Sorry. All my news is all over the shop. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the end of BTE. Um, there was another episode after it. There was three episodes. There was no match on the third one. The third episode was basically Matt and Nick talking smack. Yeah. It was a perfect way to it. To talk oh, they're about. active. Uh, I mean, BTE 200. Yeah. yeah. Showcase of the Immortals. I like it. I like it. Um, so, yeah, on to Dynamite. Show started off with a, a little bit of a promo recap from last week. Yeah. Which is uh, uh, Jake Roberts. Jake Roberts. Jake the Snake. Which, again, I'm still living with promos. I think the guy is crisp. He's fresh. He's believable. That's the main thing. Whenever Jake the Robert speaks, I feel like shit, man. If he was speaking to me, I'd be I'd be worried. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he does. It feels he does. Like, Go on. It feels like a real sadistic but true storyline, do you know what I mean? He um he picks his words very well. Like mm. I did, like this yeah. promo. This promo was on point, but I do feel yeah. I do feel like some of it his others have drawn out a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but nonetheless, he still still gets his point over. Yeah. But uh, did you watch Did you watch Road Two this week? No, no, well, I haven't. This this promo was off there, so I'd seen this before. So the way I've written it up was all from Road Two, Road Two, Road Two. But um, yeah, it was a great little promo. They they actually split it up from what it was on Road Two. It was like uh, on this they had Lance Archers and then they had Colt Cabanas after, didn't they? Yeah. Whereas on Road Two, it was more blended in together. Yeah. But um, yeah, beautiful little promo from from Jake the Snake. Lance Archer looking like a beast in his promo videos. Yeah. Um, Jake talking Colt Cabana. Yeah. Basically. Showed him a lot of respect, but also bitched him. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. In the right way. But I I think that that build up, I think the way that that it was built up and everything like that, and the way Colt sold himself in his then promo after. Yeah. It made it. It made it more like. Oh, hold on a minute. Colt could win this. Yeah. Do you know yeah what I, definitely. Like in the back of my head, I was thinking, no, he's he's not going to win this. Like he's going to lose it. Do you know what I mean? Like because that Lance Archer, Cody Rhodes, blah blah blah. But in in my head, then I was thinking, well, what happens if Colt won this match, and then Lance Archer went on a mad one and made Cody lose the final? Yeah. Then setting up a nice big rivalry. Yeah, because he cost him the match, like thing. So Cody loses his shit and goes for him. Like. Yeah. You yeah, know, I thought that might be a nice angle. Paul Cabana sells himself well. He's good at the con. Like I, I, I love the way he was like. People see me as a comedian. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I like to have fun. I'm also a world class veteran that's travelled the world and won titles. But yeah. I like. I was sold real well. Yeah, I wrote wrote that down when he says about um when Jake says about Lance Archer being a veteran in Japan. He had to he had to leave America to make it big. Blah 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 blah. And then Colt goes, well, what about me? Like I yeah. I, I was successful in Japan for 15 years. It's like yeah. that, just that line alone. Like it's like, oh, okay, fair enough. Do you know what I mean like the way you just say it nonchalantly, like, like, well, don't count me out. It, it kind of yeah. did that sentiment of, oh shit, man, yeah, that's that's a fair point. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But um. I think people how uh, ring savvy and veteranized Hulk Cabana is. They don't you, you you see the gimmick and you don't really see past it. I think sometimes. I I think one might not have helped him too much was um. The whole Vince McMahon making him into a commentator, even though he's good at commentary. When he was in WWE, it's like we we knew back. WWE. Yeah, he has. No, he was on the Ring of Honor. Colt Cabana. Yeah. No, he was in WWE. Yeah, he was, but not as commentary. He was called Scotty Goldman. Yeah, they put him on commentary. Was... No, they didn't put him on commentary, bro. Trust. Oh, that's what I read the other day. I watched something on it the other day. I watched uh, Chris Van Vliet with. I'm sure that's what he said, mate. I was doing additions at the time, so I might have missed it. I don't, I don't remember it, bro. But I know he's definitely he's been a long time commentator on Ring of Honor, but yeah. well, not when, on. the reason the because re, he went to Ring of Honor after WWE, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when he was in WWE, they give him they give him commentary work to do, and apparently he was awesome at it. So basically, he was like, "Well, this is not what I want to do." Like, so he left, and then when he went to ROH, they were like, they put him on commentary the one time because they they knew that he was good from WWE. And then he was like, right, so what am I doing this week? And they were like, oh, yeah, you're on commentary. And then that was it. That's how his commentary 
begun on ROH from WWE. That's why. I, I, I didn't know that. That's why I read anyway. I don't remember. Huh? I don't remember it. Well, it's come from his mouth, man. I'm sure of it. I'm sure he was. Might have, might have been one of those shows that we don't watch. Like, like it used to be Heat. I think it's main event now. Yeah, I whatever. think it was something like that. Yeah, like uh, main event. Might not yeah, that's what I mean. So I might not have seen it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's that. That was uh, from him on Chris Van Vliet. When they were at like a oh. carny, they did a live show, a live episode of it. Yeah. It was good. Good watch. So any of you who haven't watched it, check him out. Chris Van Vliet on YouTube. We don't get any money for these sponsorship shits. We just do it because we like wrestling. Yeah. <coughs> we this one, we've got to say. It's the real wrestling show by real wrestling fans for real wrestling fans. And fuck Vince. Fuck Vince. Perfect place to put it after saying we're wrestling fans, but I think everybody can vouch at the moment. Vince is a fucking cunt. Wait, wait, wait. I think we forgot to put that in last week. We did. So, just from that for last week. Fuck, fuck Vince. Vince. Too true, Blue. We were going to be nice. We were going to give him a day off, and then he went in, went in the news and spoiled it all. That's what it was, mate. He's trying to provoke us. No, yeah, and you provoked us. Like, we're like, we'll give him a break, we'll give him a break, and then he's like, I'll be a bad guy anyway. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I'm Vince McMahon, yeah. I'll bribe the president of the United States of America and then sack all my stars. Yes. Anyway, back to the match. Yeah. <laughs> First match of the evening. It was uh, the TNT television title quarterfinal bracket. Did you catch any of the uh, opening matches to this? To the, like the. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Fuck you, coronavirus! Fuck you! But go on, yeah, carry on, brother. Yeah. I'm going to be doing some business for a sec. But go on. My notes are in front of me on my lap. Um, so we had Coca Banner versus Alan Charger. I'm guessing it was a 20 minute time limit. Um, it didn't actually say. Good, because I didn't catch any. Time. No, it just, said, it just said that it was a quarter final and she forgot to say it. Um, Lance Archer jumps off the top rope and misses. It's my first note, so I don't know if you've got a people for that. Uh, yeah, I got a couple. Uh, Lance smashed someone in the crowd before the match even started. Uh, big elbow to Colt before the match. In the ring. Uh, yeah. Colt stopping before running into the the boot of Lance Archer on the apron. Thought that was quite unique. Mm. Um... Colt playing Lance Archer in and out of the ring, antagonising him. But he yeah. kept on running in, running out, running in, running out. Uh, half Nelson Slam. Or potentially full Nelson Slam from Lance Archer. I thought that was pretty sick. Yeah, he says that well. What did you say you had? Uh, Lance Archer jumps off the top rope and misses. Oh. Uh, no, I don't know what that is, see. Where's that? He does it. You went to the top rope and go with jumps on. Just tries to do a crossbody or a clothesline or something. And then, when I say he misses, he doesn't miss. Uh, Colt Cabana like, moves out of the way. Ah, oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah, go on then. Carry on. I think I was um, earlier on. I thought that was a bit stupid, to be honest. Lance Archer doesn't need to be going off the top rope that mm. early in a match. Yeah, he don't, I don't really think that he needs to be going up top rope unless he's doing like a superplex. Yeah, or unless he's fighting someone just as big as him, so it's like. Right, I have to go out of my arsenal to yeah. beat this guy top thing. Yeah, but he definitely doesn't need a big power move off the top. No. Most definitely not. Especially not. against, not, not no offence, but against someone like Hulk Banner, who already, we already believe in, he's the underdog. We don't need Giant to be doing some spectacular move like. Yeah, to add, yeah, exactly. He didn't need to add anything to a fact like. Yeah. So yeah. I thought that was a bit shit, but, you know, showed his athleticism. He didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. I just thought the psychology... Match. I thought he looked. Um, I thought his presence in the match was good this week. Well, I, I said to you like when uh, we spoke about him last week, where with uh, Marco said, "Is he going to look that good against Colt Cabana? Someone who's bigger, yeah, more believable." I thought he did. I thought he done well. I think he did. Yeah, he uh, thought, certainly uh, he certainly made uh, Jim Canat eat his words with, uh, "Oh well, he's, he's doing a move that he ain't going to be able to do to anybody else." Like, yeah, or whoever it was, Kevin Nash, I think it was. It might have been. Kevin Nash, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Kevin Nash, eat your words, motherfucker. Um, yeah, so what else you got, man? Uh, Lance Beastie Chokes Slam, fair play. Bro, that's, see, that's, that is right at the end, man. Yeah, that's what I said to you. Yeah, let me get a couple more things in there, man. Uh, his full Nelson Slam was sick. Colt's chops doing nothing. And then a big clothesline to Colt. 
Uh, Colt yeah. takes a free shot at Lance Archer. Yeah. And not not a lot. Uh, cool body splash set up in the corner from Archer, where this might be what you talk about, but I don't think it was. He 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 was in the corner and he he had hold of the ropes and he jumped up in the air and then as he as he like kind of was coming down, he pushed himself off the ropes and span around. And yeah. he did, did like a kind of like a body squash. He missed yeah. that as well, like, but I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Hurricanrana from Colt, but it looked a bit, looked a bit shit, man. Did yeah, you know? he's a bit too big to do Hurricanranas on, I think. Lance yeah. Archer. I think it was more Lance Archer that made the mistake, though, than, than yeah. Colt. Colt seemed to get the position in right and everything. Yeah, I think he just moved a bit slow, didn't he? Yeah. Lance. Yeah. Fucking. Um, uh, yeah, and then, oh, one more thing. Lance Archer laughing when Colt was punching him. Yeah. I thought that, was, again, was a nice little making him out to be a monster, you know? Apologies. And then, yeah, down to you, brother. Um, th- that was it, then. Finish of the match, bro. Yeah, choke okay. slam, Beastie choke slam. Yeah. And then blackout to finish. The choke slam was done real well. Yeah, I, I actually should... missed it. Huh? I actually missed it, mate. I was writing something as it happened. So yeah. I, I rewound it back to watch it, like. But yeah, Beast. Luchasaurus, if you're watching, Lance Archer, good teacher for you. Even though you did do pretty well last time. Yeah, last, exactly. last couple of times, actually. Hope you find your tail. Yeah, hope you find your tail. <laughs> your tail could be in wheels. <laughs> What's Lance that? Lance Archer wins. Lance Archer, man of the match for me. Um, yeah, Lance Archer, man of the match for me. One moment. Wait, yeah, we have a moment as well. Yeah. Well, it was a good match, and I was, I was happy with Lance Archer. Like I said, with the first one, because it was Magnuson, I thought it might have been a bit misleading. <laughs> but he done just as well against Colt Cabana. So if you can go with Colt Cabana, I think you got you doing good, like. Yeah. Something just went ding. Yeah, it's my phone. I've got three phones now, bro. I haven't set. I got my brand new one as well, which I haven't even set yet. Ladies and gentlemen, we, you are not viewing a pimp or a drug dealer right now. He just has three phones. No pimps, no drug dealers in this house. No, I retired from that when I was like 20. 20? I thought you were going to say 15 then. Well, um, I'm halfway through my career then, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we got then? What we got? Moving on. Promo. Promo. I thought there's a bit shit. Uh, I thought she was good. We you know when she held the needle left, right? Yeah. I thought she was going to reject herself in the mouth. I actually I thought... Like, I... that's going to be sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I thought the same. And then when nothing happened with her, I was like, oh, that was shit. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely. I thought the same as well. Oh. She was her hands almost over her eyes, like, and then she just squirted it, and then it was like the promo. I was like, I... oh. When I was watching it, I was like, ah. I was proper <laughs> grinning, bro. Yes. Yeah, I thought it was going to pan out or something, like, and then, like, she inject, like, you know, Jimmy Havoc or something, like, willingly. But, yeah. Yeah, she basically, she was in, um, she was in, like, a dentist's office, and she had, like, a, a whiteboard with role model written on it, and then she had rule number one. And that was all the rules. Basically, don't, don't not play the rules. Was that, was that the first rule? Play by the rules. Play by the rules, yeah. Play by the rules, rule one. Second rule, don't talk about rule one. Or oh, is that Fight Club? <laughs> yeah. Second rule, you must play by the rules. <laughs> yeah. Play by the rules. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, next up, we had... It went on through the night as well. Uh, a bunch of prediction blogs for the Moxley versus Hager match. Mm-hmm. This one was Ariel Hanwari. Yeah, how He's a ESPN presenter. Yeah, he's actually on backstage that last week or the week before as well. On uh, WWE's backstage on yeah. Fox. Okay. Um, he's definitely he's um I, I like him. He's uh on backstage. They were talking to him about wrestling, like what he's been doing during quarantine and stuff. Yeah. And saying how he was trying to get his son into wrestling, which you know when you have a kid you do. Like I've got yeah, my yeah. daughter and whatever. But yeah. He's a Bret Hart fan. And he knows his shit, man, from okay. what I've seen on uh, backstage. So He made the wrong choice here, though, didn't he? he? Did he make the wrong decision? I'm not sure. 
Okay, I, don't, I didn't write who, who, who picked who, I just wrote who it was. Yeah, he definitely made the wrong choice when he picked Hager. Oh, he picked Hager, did he? Yeah. Elio Halwani picked Jake Hager. And then the next yeah. runner was uh, Taz. Yeah. Who voted for Mox. I'm sure. Bit, Got a it. bit off subject, but we were watching um, Unrestricted recently, me and my missus. Oh, Dynamite and Restricted, yeah. Yeah, and uh, awesome, Taz is on it. Yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome. All I have to say on him now. But uh, my missus like, walked in just before it started. She walked in, she was like, is that Bully Ray? Oh, mate, do you know what, all like, through it, all through it, I was thinking the same thing. They could be brothers. I, 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 at first, I was like, no, he's the, not being racist. No, he's the wrong colour. Not hmm. being racist again, but like, that's the first thing that came to my mind. But then I looked at it and I was like, hang on a minute. Actually, I can't take the piss out of you. He does look like him, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, mate. It's a bit of an image. Just a lot smaller, like. They they need to sign Bubba Ray and... Um, I forgot to put the music back on, man. Son of a bitch. God. Well, look what happens when the DJ in there, man. Yeah, we'll start that again. No, don't bother. Don't worry about it. Oh, fu oh fuck it. Fuck, fuck, fuck it. All right. Rough around the edges. Quarantine, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't be worse than last week. By now, we've rung each other about twenty-five times. <laughs> yeah, mate. Nobody's using the internet. I'm I'm plugged in, hardwired. I am like a fucking robot today, bro. We are winning today. Winning. Not not one time has he cut out. We got a bit of a delay, but that's standard. You know what I mean? Yeah. But even when Dorsey's in real life, person to person, he's still got a bit of delay on him. You know what I mean? I'm across between Rob Van Dam and Orange Cassidy. Yeah, too many chair shots is what he's trying to say. Too um, many, too many chair shots. Uh, yeah, so after Taz had his vote, we went on to Technique by Taz. Which is um, yeah. a very cool segment, I think. Yeah, I love Taz talking about wrestling anytime. But when we when we were discussing it the other week, where they had like all lines down the screen and shit, do you know what I mean? And we were like, that's poor, they need to do it like with circles and that. Booyah! <laughs> this happened again. Yeah. This happened again, brother. I us already! Yeah. <laughs> And touching on it as well, while, I, while I'm thinking about it, wasn't it, wasn't it last week or the week before we said about someone needs to fall Nelson Slam in AEW? Yeah. And you went, yeah, someone like Lance Archer. And I went, no, not someone like Lance Archer, someone who's got the fall away slam. Yeah. Boom, Lance Archer, full Nelson Slam. Yeah. Grrr. Higher um, IRS, higher IRS, IRS. Not IRS, not IRS, higher IRS. Um, but yeah, the technique by Taz, when he breaks it all down, this week it was uh, Jake Hager's choke, basically. Can't remember the name of it. I didn't write the name of it down. I, still, I don't, even know, don't even know there is a name for it, yeah? There I is. Know, there is a name for it. Well, for this I'm segment... Sure said last week's blog. I'm sure I wrote it down last week. It, it was something, something Japanese, but for the, for the sake of this, we're going to call it the Wanahogalugi by uh, Jake Hager. The Huchinaka Chokehold. Huh? The Huchinaka Chokehold. That'll do. What he said. Um... Yeah, it was good. Good little breakdown, good little segment. I think it suits the show. You know? I don't know Taz talking about we spoke about this before. Taz talking about wrestling. Makes you listen. It's like a fat kid eating cake, innit? Yeah. It just happens. It's yeah. just natural. Yeah. You can imagine Taz as well sitting down eating the cake like uh, the fat kid off Matilda. <laughs> Snarling at you like a, um, like a little chihuahua. like. Um, yeah. But yeah, good segment. Um, yeah, I liked it. Uh, moving on. And uh, the next match was a 20 minute time limit. Cassandra Golden versus Britt Baker. Bit of news on Cassandra Golden. She is recently on Impact Wrestling. I was going to say, a few of the names like Cassandra Golden that have appeared on AEW recently have also been on Impact around about the same time. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're up to date on Impact now, are you? Um, I, I watched like a couple of shows the other day, it was alright. The, ro the rosemary shit. The rosemary shit was good, and uh, yeah, mate. To be honest, nah, it, it didn't hold my attention that much. It's dying, man. It's dying. Unfortunately. It is at the moment, yeah. Um, yeah, Cassandra Golden beats Britt Baker. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I didn't write down squash match. Shit. But it was <laughs> pretty much Britt Baker. Nice, uh, nice super kick by Britt Baker. I thought I'd throw that in there because I rag her out every week for doing a shit super kick. Yeah. Especially her boyfriend, there's an amazing super kick. <laughs> Wait, was this a super kick she caught her in the sh shoulder? No, she caught her in the, in, the, in the chin with this one, it looked like to me. Oh, okay. 
There was someone in the night did a did a super kick and it was shit. Can't remember who it was. No, or. I, I I always rag Brit out for her super kicks because of Adam. Adam Cole, baby. Yeah. But this one she nailed it. Mate. Britain it down him. The only moment in the match, so I know. <laughs> Britt Baker slowing things down from the off. Posing yeah. straight away with her opponent. Cassandra teeth on the rope to finish. That's yeah. all I have got. That's all she wrote. Yeah, I've only got a nice super kick by Britt. Britt hits the finish. JD. She was just a standard squash women's match, wasn't it, basically? Getting Britt over. Yeah. Yeah. So you had the moment in this match then, I take it? Huh? You had any moments in this match? Yeah, just the win. Just the one? Just the one. Zero for me, brother. Yeah, I thought it might be, because if you didn't rate the super kick, there was no moments. No. <laughs> uh, man of the match, Britt Baker. Yeah. Man of the match, Britt Baker. Yeah, it was, um, it was what it was, really. Yeah. Bit shit. Bit poor. But moving on. Another promo, which... Sorry, go on. Again, it's due to the lack of talent that they can actually use. Yeah. They're recycling at, at the moment, the, isn't it? The pandemic. Yeah. Uh, next, we had some more promos of the uh, Mox Hager voting, whatever you want to call it. Was Ron Funches, which is a comedian. Yeah. The second one was Mike Goldberg, the voice of MMA and Bellator. I didn't write that down, but I'll take your word for it. The first yeah. one, John Funches voted for Mox. And uh, Mike Goldberg voted for Hager. We would do his Bellator guy. No, yeah, Baron. Uh, then, Bellator. Uh, then we had uh, a Rick Santana slash Ortiz and then just Rick the Bubbly Bunch promo. <laughs> the Bubbly <laughs> Bunch? It was cool. Yeah. It was very cool, but I, I, didn't, I didn't find myself writing notes on it. I watched it. And like, I can kind I of remember. Write it. No. I wrote... No, uh, I wrote Jericho... No, I did write what he finished off saying. What's that? Uh, on the phone to his agent, basically saying, "Where's my toilet paper?" <laughs> yeah. At the end of it, like, but basically, just to let everyone know, the bubbly bunch was basically a, a multiple video call, but it it ended up being where one person did a a blog, like did a little thirty second skit or ten second skit, then they basically finished off their skit by going, "So what do you think, Dawes?" And then Dawsey yeah. did his skit, and then he went, well, what do you think, Jericho? It was funny. It was good. Yeah. It was pretty good, like. In the circle, basically. Yeah. We didn't point that out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was good. It was good. Immediate, com comedic genius again. Uh, one thing worth noting, we didn't mention, uh, Jericho and Tony Schiavone on commentary this week. I'll have to stop again. you there. Shivon. Tony Chivon. Jericho, he will not learn. He will not learn. Um, I know we didn't write this in the news, so I'm going to check it in right now before we forget. Jericho was asked about doing commentary after he retired, and he said he would be well up for it. Yeah. And so was I, because he has been golden on commentary tonight and last week. He was better last week. This week, he seemed, he seemed like a bit of a triad this week. No, I, I still lived him, mate. I still pissing myself all the time. Oh, and he was brilliant, he's mate. Best, he's the best commentator, guest commentator they've had, like Cody, Kenny, everyone so far. Um, MJF was pretty good. He's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, but could he do another whole show and get away with it? Well, that's the thing, that's isn't it? Do you know what I mean? He didn't win match, like he hasn't done a whole show. I'm on about people who should done a whole show. Didn't have his, didn't have a chance. But anyway, he was good, though, mate. I'm not, I'm not denying it, but I, I just felt like he was better last week. But I think last I think last week's one he had there was a bit more hype. It was the first time of doing it, you know. By after two hours, of, which would end up being this show, he would have been into yeah. it a bit more, a bit more relaxed, you know. I think it showed, but still yeah. absolutely on point. Jericho's a legend, mate. Yeah, Jesus. Up there with the Chris Benoit's. And I say that because I rate that guy very highly. Jericho's just surpassed Chris Benoit just on entertainment. He has, mate. He has far surpassed Benoit, man. Everybody's surpassed Benoit now, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean when I what I say, like... Oh, my favourite rivalry of all time, mate, probably is Jericho versus Benoit. Yeah, yeah. They were the best matches ever, like... They were, mate. They were. 
But uh, yeah, moving on after the bubbly bunch. We are the Shubby. This is, or Pine if you want to call him Pineapple Pete, you Pineapple can. Pete, <laughs> aka Pineapple Pete. This is the Spanish god, Sammy G. Not Brandy's favourite person. <laughs> that was what was written above his name. Yeah. This week, yeah. Well, I got quite a few notes on this one. Yeah, I got a few as well. Yeah, it, like the match was okay. Like it wasn't, it wasn't anything spectacular at all. It's like I couldn't say to you now, like, oh, there was that brilliant bit or that brilliant bit. There was a couple of memorable bits in it, bits in it, but not for the right reasons. I don't, I don't feel, you know, okay. but but not in wrong reasons either. I know it sounds sounds crazy, like, but Shug D, the way he composed himself in the match, all wrong. Yeah, all wrong. He, yeah, he felt felt like a job there. He come across, yeah, but he like he felt like a jobber. But like they've said to him, look, be yourself out there. Go on, just do your gimmick. Like if that is his gimmick, because the the last time that he wrestled, he was he was a genuine jobber. Yeah. You know what what you and me would genuinely see as a jobber gets one offensive move in, that's it. But he didn't. He got a couple of moves in. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was like his his like person around the ring was just all wrong, man, all wrong. The the gyrate in. Conga thing wrong. Do you know what I mean like the whole? Yeah, bit of a cheap Jose, no way Jose like, wasn't it? Yeah, he was. He was just. He was like, mate, you're not going to get in the new day. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they've That's already. What I mean, cheap, no, no way Jose is a cheap version of the new day. Yeah. And he was good at what he did. <laughs> but he, so, he was just. You're going to be a cheap version of no way Jose. You're the C factor. It's like the way the match started off, him jumping up on the corner, sleeping. Yeah. Then doing it on the middle ropes in a different corner, sleeping. It's like you you can't do that to Sammy G man. You're nobody. Yeah, like exactly. even even if someone said to you, right, go out there and do your own gimmick, like you don't do that. Yeah, like exactly. you know I mean, no, know, know your role. Like you know what I mean, yeah, you exactly. Know, you know, he... Tyler Breeze played the arrogant character. Who? But Tyler Breeze, for example, yeah. he played that arrogant character. Yeah. If you stuck him in the ring with Shawn Michaels, who is the same character, he would not get away with playing that character. Exactly. He'd have Show a bit of respect, like, yeah. But like, like this, Shug D was like, you know, sleeping on Sammy G in the beginning, mistake. <clears throat> uh, the, the body popping, like the whole that passing on the dozy over the other way, back the other way. That was weird. Like, yeah, it, it wasn't weird in the fact of what that was because that would be cool for somebody else, or yeah. even, even cool for him if he was more developed. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like. Good on the guy for like for for you know actually showing what he is like and he's a nobody. Oh yeah. You know yeah, it, it's good to see it's it's good to see that and somebody saying tone it down. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like you you haven't got someone saying to him, look, you know this is not how we do things over here. You need to cut that out. You need to cut this out and you need to cut that out or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's like go on, I go on, go on, have a good laugh, like you know. Yeah. But nobody's giving the etiquette of, well, look, you know, go out and be yourself, but don't like be aware. If you do this, it's not going to make you look great. If you do this, it's not going to make you look great. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, a, just a couple of heads up sort of things. But he, he seemed to walk into it blind, maybe. But um, another thing... Um, well, this happened first. Sammy G's suplex to Shug D. You see it? Yeah. yeah, almost dropped him again. Looked like he, yeah, should, no, looked no, like he couldn't I get him out. Play blonde, so I'll start off. Uh, a big knee to the face by Sammy G right off the bat yeah and then uh, should be on the tree of roll on the middle of the ring on the outside yeah that was quite brash I haven't seen that bit in a while say that again you know what the tree of roll is right yeah well he was on the outside of the ring on the middle of the row oh okay yeah yeah so I haven't seen that for a while where people are just hanging yeah, I didn't. I didn't see that. I didn't pick that up as something unique, but yeah, no, that's a fair shot. Um, and then yeah, Sammy again struggles to do the vertical suplex. Yeah. And here's the thing, which is annoying me. It wouldn't bother me if he was just doing a vertical suplex, but he's trying to show his strength, and he's showing that he has no strength. Yeah. <laughs> well, he got it in his legs. He got his legs because he did three whole squats. Uh, is that the body strength? Is lacking. No, I think Shug D missed time to jump, which didn't help him on it. But at the same time, if you're going to do it, it needs to be done. 
Yeah. Like the British Bulldog, when he showed his strength and did the bit called Suplex, he didn't move a, a muscle, like, do you know what I mean? The thing is with Sammy's, he seems to be like, he seems to be like, you're there, he seems to be lifting up to that position, like there, and then yeah. stopping. And it's like, that's a vertical suplex up there, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, up, up top, not over there. Yeah. But, he's, got, he's got. I mean, he's like me, like because I cycle so much. You know, my legs are beasty as fuck. Yeah. But on the top half, apart from throwing a punch, my 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 my, my strength is shit. Sammy G is a pigeon. <laughs> he's basically exactly. a pigeon, mate. He's got he's got leg strength. A monster legs. He can do that. You can get him up halfway, and then it, as soon as he gets left using your actual hands, he's like, oh fuck. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He is a pigeon, mate, because like he flies quite often as well, doesn't he? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, Sammy G, you heard it here first, is a pigeon. <laughs> but, um, yeah, where were you at on the match, anyway? Uh, well, that's where I got to. Oh, the, the suplex. Yeah, yeah. What, what did you, like, I'm not sure if this was intentional or not now, you heard it, right? Do you know, when you had your head down there and I looked back, I was like, oh, fuck, man, he's gone. It looked like a t-shirt. It looked like a t-shirt in the background. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, what did you make of Shug D when he... When he was Irish whipped, and he just sat down. And Didn't then, like it. And then he, he got him in the, the small package. Like, was that a botch, or did he do it? Because when when he did it, I thought, oh, he's fallen over. But then when I watched, when yeah. I looked at it again, like I was, I kept on looking, he had his feet against Sammy G's leg. Yeah. Both of his feet against the one leg, as though, like, that's my that's my mechanism to stop. And it's like, hold yeah. on a minute, that's... That looked shit and cheap and mistakey. Yeah. That looked botchy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Very bad guy. Yeah. It's like, yeah. like I said in the beginning, mate, all the guts in the world to the lad. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, he, he's gone out there and he's done whatever. But yeah. he just seems to have gone yeah. in blind. I suppose probably the last minute as well. They wouldn't have known this for a long time. They wouldn't have been expecting to get called up for a lease over here. No, so of course. He's only this hand obviously, which is... Launched him into the spotlight. Fuck yeah. Oof. That's bad. Fuck you, up, bro. Jaws, he's um, got the burpees. Yeah. Mate, good credit to the guy. Good credit to him. Do you know what I mean? But. It, oh, I don't know, mate. He just. There was just. This match just lacked so much. But yeah, again, but so many so, notes. There was never that bit. Sammy does the five minutes carry squats. Yeah. I looked a bit like he struggled again. I don't know. I thought he did them all right. Like. Did them all right, but if, 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 I also felt like a vertical suplex is harder. Yeah. But it felt like he was trying to compensate by doing that, but it's weaker. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you're using bigger muscles, like. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're using less muscles. It's obviously less harder to fire and carry someone than it is the vertical suplex someone. Yeah. So. It, him making that look easy <coughs> kind of a way it showed the weakness even more from earlier you mm-hmm. know what I mean I see what you mean Sammy G's a pigeon <laughs> but then he backs up with a beastly clothesline fair play he comes up with a Bradshaw style clothesline yeah later on which I think might have been him realising like he's showing his lack of strength at the moment possibly possibly mate but, um, if you struggle to pick someone up, and you know, if you know, then obviously everyone else on TV knows because you're yeah. sure to stay, you know? away, stay away from tests of strength, like. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what do you think of uh, Shug D's blocking in the corner as well, where um, Sammy went over to punch him and he just dropped down onto his ass, like. I know it, it sounds something plain and, and boring, but I, I thought it was real cool, like. And Sammy, Sammy sold it quite well as well. I mean, again, I don't know, I didn't... At this point, I think I just got a bit lost in the criticism of the match already. Yeah, there was there was a lot to criticise in this, like... Yeah. But... I think I got... Go on. I think I got a bit down on the match by this point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of felt like I like, but... The match didn't last much longer than that anyway, I don't think. No, it didn't, no. Uh, Sammy did an inverted Death Valley driver knee strike, whatever that's called. I call it, I, I read the inverted torture rack into GTS. Exactly what I just said. Um, <laughs> that was the finish of the match, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, that was done really well, mate. 
that's that's a good move for Sammy G. Fair play. Oh yeah. Good move. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, he got the of a CM Punk as well. Yeah, yeah, but it's 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 better than CM Punk's move though, isn't it? Much it's better. Yeah, it's not just torture rack. Where it's, where it's, um, Punk had him in the, uh, the fireman's carry and then threw him forward and went back. Yeah. Whereas, this one is the torture rack, so And then over to the side. Into the ER. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, mate, I talked over you then. It cut you out a little bit, but uh, I think that will be the thumbnail. Um, yeah, Jericho calls Shug D Shug Knight. <laughs> you catch that? No. No. I caught it. I called him a lot of things. Yeah. yeah he did, yeah, yeah. He yeah, did. Yeah, right right that, at the yeah. end, he called him Shug Knight. Uh, Shug D. <clears throat> Good on you, Jericho. Good on you. At least he knows his uh, music and his history, like, you know what I mean? But he should do, being a, being a rock and roller. Um, after that, uh, who was your man of the match? Oh, yeah. I thought it so. definitely uh, the British guy. Oh, Shug D? Yeah, 100% not. How many moments? <laughs> Uh, uh, two. Two momentos. I had one moment in his match. Uh, after the match, Sammy G jumped on the microphone. <laughs> yeah, cuts a promo, ragging Darby Allen. Yeah, saying how he's uh, got through the first round. No, he didn't. You're a lot further along, Mr. Sammy G. You just got through the quarters. Yeah, um, attack should be. Yeah, after saying about Derby. Yeah, and then Derby Allen makes the same. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty pretty shit match, to be honest. Yeah. It's like trying to trying to get Shug D trying to get over slightly. He did he did well in the sense that he gave it his, his all like. You know, but ultimately it was that match was sold for Sammy G to kind of look like a boss. Look yeah. like Lance Archer against Cole Cabana, essentially. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's that's exactly how it went. You know. Yeah. But uh, in my opinion, did not work at all. No, I. Uh, but we are yeah. a limited roster, like you said. So. Yeah, exactly. It's um, it's a tough time for everyone in the wrestling company. So we'll bring this up in the news, and probably in a ten minute talk. But like all these wrestlers being released recently. Yeah. People are like, oh, they'll go here, they'll go there, they'll go there. Can these companies afford to sign them right now? Exactly, that is the big thing. Can we get them over to compete? Yeah. Well, we won't uh, We won't go into that too deep. Yeah. Because uh, we'll have a chat about that at the end. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you're, you're on the nail there, mate. You're on the nail. Um. So, moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was, uh, um, more from old promos, uh, predictions. <laughs> Say that again. More promos slash predictions. Promomos, promomos. <laughs> promomos into predictions. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, first up, we had Big John McCarthy, a Bellator fighter. Yeah. Who went with Hager? He picked Hager, yeah? Yeah. Because he's a Bellator fighter. Shock, shock, horror, horror. Shock, 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 shock. horror. Yeah. Um, and then Excalibur was next. Yep, yeah, who am I? Who am I? Mock, sorry, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure what what the tallies are. I think they're one each all the way through at the moment, so they got three each. I haven't got a clue. I, I didn't write any of them down. I, I think, think they are anything. they are evens. We've done we've done three three of these segments of the votes. It's been three of them, and they have been equal. It's in a minute they start changing. Yeah, because most of it's the inner circle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much, but uh. Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna kick off the next match, I shall introduce the twenty minute time limit. And it was between Kip Sabian with super sexy Penelope Ford. Yes. This I, is, uh, I like her in leather. Oh, does, don't we all, baby? Don't we all? Yeah, um, yeah boy. With uh, versus Chucky T with Orange Casty. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Presented on my boy's t-shirt. Freshly squeezed. Be a vitamin C in folks, especially this time. Yeah, man. Coronavirus is the type of flu, I'm sure vitamin C can't do you any harm, so get your freshly squeezed. 
Orange Cassidy juice in you. Yes, yeah, four aisles away from the toilet roll section. Uh, so yeah, match started off good, man. Real wrestling to start off. Yeah. Real wrestling, like I mean, like I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen a load of matches in AEW where there's good technical matches, good, uh, good technical yeah. wrestling, like, and this was. I like, I'm very surprised from Kip as well. Very time. But, <laughs> well, no, mate. I, I've always rated. I've always rated Kip. I don't like. <laughs> it, I don't like his person. I can't. Yeah. I can't get on with his person. Like you know what I mean. Like I. I think Kip Saban is an absolute brilliant wrestler. I didn't really know that he had the the mat technician in him. Yeah. You know, but he mate he young well with Chucky e. T. I, I expected it from Chucky e. T. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Kip Sabian's a well-rounded veteran, mate. He's been around the world. Like. I'm not saying he hasn't. But I just didn't... I didn't expect the technicalness from him. I can thought... always say, like, people in the rate ring of honour, and I've, I've bad-mouthed them myself. Not... Not, like... Myself? Like, myself? Who are you? Rosemary? Myself. <laughs> myself. There's no denying us. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you make it an ROH, then you you got to be good, man, because... It's a wrestling company. Yeah. They rely on wrestling ability, and that's about it. Yeah. So if you make it a bit, then you, you're doing all right, like, in my books. Like. Mate, I like Kip Sabian as a wrestler. Well, he's up in Japan, and obviously he's always going to do well in England now, especially since he's made a name for himself abroad, but, but he was all, always a well veteranized person in, in Britain anyway. Yeah. But it helps to have good eye candy like he got, let's be fair. Well, he, he's only just had it since AEW wrote. No, I know that. It's not like he made a career off having it, like like Joey Janela might have. Yeah. No. Joey Janela made a career off doing crazy shit, bro. No, what I'm saying is, though, like, Jimmy, like, Joey Janela was no one when he was whipping up. Like, the kit has already made, made what was already a big name. Not a big name, but he was one of the more known names in AEW. Yeah. When he finished fights and he wasn't with Penelope, so... Yeah. I just credit him getting any credibility from here for this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because he was already there. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I think I disagree, but... There we go. Encyclopedia that I am, are you, brother? Yes, yes. Yes, I am! Yes, I am! Unless they're on Impact or Raw, you probably don't know who they are. No. That is true. I, uh, I've i got other things to do other than just watch wrestling all the time, brother. Yeah, I know. How about now? <laughs> yes, i still got time. To, mate, I get oversaturated with it. If I watch too much of it, I get oversaturated. It's like, I want a show that I can completely enjoy. I used to yeah. I used to enjoy Raw and SmackDown, mate. I used to enjoy them. But now it's just shit. No, I mean, to be fair, I, even I, I, I haven't watched a Raw in about three weeks, like where I haven't fallen asleep by the last hour. Well, there we go. So the last, well, the last hour being the fifth hour of Raw. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. I but, and I haven't enjoyed SmackDown since they took AJ Styles office. Anyway, let's get back to our fucking shit. Yeah. Which is uh, Sabian. Kip Sabian vs Chucky e. T. Uh, Chucky e. T starts off dominant. Yes. Good wrestling, back and forth. Real wrestling. Chucky e. T vertical suplex onto the ring apron is my next note. Well, I, so, I had the real wrestling to start uh, off, back and forth. Chucky e. T, good exchange. Chucky e. T won the won the exchange with that uh, rollover schoolboy leg takedown. Yep. Yeah. Um, Kip, nice springboard drop kick. Yeah. Uh, Chucky e. T sit a power bomb kit, that was beast. And then pretty much like five seconds later, another nice power bomb by Chucky e. T. Uh, that, yeah, I got loads of stuff before that. Uh, Chucky e. T does the whole orange casting on the edge of the ring. Uh, Saban changing his rope tactic, I like that. Again, it's quite unique, which yeah. you know gives credit to Kip. He went to do one attack, the uh, Chucky e. T moved. He come back down and re reasserted the move, right? He's been doing that well a lot in a few matches lately as well. He does a couple of times in this match. Yeah. Um, I like the way Kip as well, when he goes for the pins, 
he pulls all, he pulls like the arms in, the legs, anything that's like hang, hang, hanging out of the pin. So like your yeah. opponent's down on the floor, their hands hanging out, he tucks it in. He grabs yeah. it with his hat, he pulls it all in like, I like that, that's a good little touch. Good little touch there. Um, Ford, have you, did you write the Ford stomping on Chucky T on the outside? Uh, no, I just read for, uh, Ford intervening this, I think. Uh, okay, set out power slam is what's we, what you said. And Jericho turned around and goes, Siobhan, do you know what that's called? And he went, no, Jericho, what's that called? And he goes, it's called the Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> yeah. right, I'm, I'm on point with you because I remember now you said that. Yeah, now uh, now it's up where you said. Nice set up, power one. Beastie spin out punch by Kev. He fucking clocked him. Like, he, he, went, he went for some... Um, he went for like a, a suplex of some sort. Kev spun out of it. Just turned around and just went... Fuck! I don't remember that. Yeah, I mean, it got a moment for me. It was a proper. He clocked him like. Oh, I must have must have been writing something there. Yeah. Probably the Jericho yeah. cheesy, yeah. Chucky Cheese joke. Yeah, it's pain in the ass, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know that Chucky he uh, hit a really poor eat the feet. Yeah, it, it was. Um, Kip tries the springboard DDT. Yeah. And then it, it gets reversed into a, a poor eat the feet. Hmm. Now the re reverse DDT went smooth, but for some reason gravity knocked them off. They went to the side a bit. Yeah. That's what ruined their life. Yeah. But, uh, I, do you know, I was like really looking forward to this match as well, like, do you know what I mean? Before it happened. But uh, it didn't pan really? out to be too. Yeah. Did you say that about Kip Sabian match and that's what Anthony said? I know. I, I thought the same, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, but it's. I like Chucky D. I, like, and I have got faith in Kip Sabian, but he just didn't didn't pull it out the bag this week. Like, he haven't he haven't for a few weeks, mind. Um, yeah. Another distraction by Ford. On the outside, yeah. which fair play. When she took her jacket off, I was ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Lift the clutch in. <laughs> Lift up your chin. Homer Simpson draw. <laughs> and then um, obviously then when Orange Cassidy got on the outside, I was I was even worse, mate. I was like spunking everywhere. When he was like, ah, Hello Orange Cassidy, you sexy motherfucker. Do you know what I mean? Well I'm not being funny, I'm sure the girls find him attractive. He's kind of like a, a scruffy Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. Or just Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Forgive me, I just think of Macaulay Culkin, I just think Home Alone. Talk about that, there was, there, was, there was some kid on Facebook who put up a picture and he was like, oh, I've just done a cheap-ass version of uh, Orange Cassidy, and I was like, no, you spelt, you spelt Orange Cassidy, you spelt Macaulay Culkin wrong, or something like that, spelt it wrong, but he did, like, he just looked like Macaulay Culkin after he just had, like, been on a session of drugs. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, back to the match. Uh, yeah, for distraction, Orange Cassidy distraction. Havoc then grabs Orange Cassidy, hits him with like a bit of a spiky DDT. Sexy, yeah. uh, su oh, super sorry. sexy Penelope Ford did a, did some flying there. Eh? Yeah, Lolita Rana, as we said back in the day. We'll, we'll have to call it the Ford Rama. How about the Ford Rama? Penelope Rama. Penelope Rama. The Penelope Rama. Why not the Penelope Rama? Penelope, Penelorama. Penelorama. Like the what? Penelope round. It sounds shit. Was... You, you sound shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. We'll call it the Penelope Rana or the Penelope round. Whatever. Either one. Um. What and, the fuck? I, and then Kip gets the pin. Yeah, Kip gets the roll up from from Penelope finishing the match, which. <laughs> It, it, it could only go one way, really, couldn't it? Like, Kip, Kip can't finish matches without somebody else. Now he can't finish matches on his own. Do you know what I mean? Well, kind of, I said to you, it's kind of the SA Rio's leader. Mate, it's good. It's it's good. <laughs> it, it works well. I don't like it, but it's good. You know, you know, it's the thing, right? SA Rio's leader, the whole point of it was, Lita was only put with SA Rio's to get SA Rio's over. Yeah. And what happened? Lita became the star. Yeah, of course. And that's kind of what's happening here again. Yeah. Yeah. But... Unfortunately, it's not a knock on Kip because I, I, don't, I know you've like ragged on Kip a bit, but I've been enjoying it. Mate, I like Kip. I've said I like Kip as a wrestler. You go back and watch the blogs, mate. I like Kip as a wrestler, but he just he just doesn't pull it out the bag all the time, like like as a as a promo guy and stuff like that. He's crap. 
Do you know what I mean? He needs Penelope Ford. Basically, Randy Orton, he's got the tools, but he doesn't do it all the time. Yeah. Just, what you're saying? He's just, he's too up and down, mate. He's not consistent enough. Yeah. But anyway, f let's finish the fucking match. Yeah, for the Hurricanrana, I mean the uh, Penelope Rama. I mean the, um, the Ford round. Kip, roll up for the finish. Man of the match for you. Uh, Chucky e. T. Chucky e. T. Same as me. Chucky e. T. Same as me. We should make a song, you and me. <laughs> like we haven't done before, G. Ha <laughs> ha! Ba-boom. <laughs> Which you can go and find on 3OZ on YouTube. Good luck in finding that. Um, <laughs> how many moments do you... Back in the day when we were young bucks. <laughs> I had two moments. I had... Two moments. Two moments. Two moments. So moving on. So the winner of the match was uh, Kip Sabian with the super sexy Penelope Ford. Oh yeah. What he said. What he said. Uh, moving on to a promo, which was another voting promo for the John Moxley vs Hager. Uh, over the Dorsey. Because you've been doing him so well. It was uh, Dan Suda, who was an actor. Soda. Soda. That's, and what I, that's, what, that's what I got. He picked Mox. And then we had. I think uh, he might have had a gun to his head, though, man. Sammy G. Guess who he picked? I don't even need to write that down. What about Ortiz? Huh? What about Ortiz? I'm oh, sorry, Ortiz. God damn it. Yeah, he, he, Ortiz and Sammy G, they both went with Mox, funny enough. Like, did Bobby. they fuck? No. They went for uh, Hager. And then, uh, moving on after that, we had another promo, which was uh, a recap, I think, wasn't it? That of Cody, uh, sorry, Spears losing to Cody in the beating Billy Gunn. With the uh, figure four finish pin. The yeah. figure four pit finish pin, I should say. And it wasn't like a tie-up pin. It was just a standard figure four and the guy just forgot to kick out. Um, that wasn't for the sake of you, brother. Huh? And then, and obviously, as well, the next part was uh, when he beat Billy Gunn as well. They showed that straight after it. Yeah. Yeah. Recaps from last week. They're, try they're trying to build Sean Spears in that mid-card position, I think. In that... Well, they're not doing a very good job because Cody just kicked the shit out of him. Yeah, but then he, he, he beat Billy Gunn then, straight off, off the bat, pretty dominant. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. So, yeah, the... Hiya! Hiya! Moving on to, um... Moving on to the next match. You've seen the rules of the squash match if you've watched BTE. Um... <laughs> so, moving on to the next match. It was a, a debutant. Justin Law... This is the perfect ten. Oops. Oh my god, you I I'll cut that bit out. The chairman, Sean Spears. Yeah. That's um that's a fact. Um so Justin Lord's debut, as Big he's already mentioned. Yeah, Sean nice Spears laughing at his opponent. Spears. What's that? Nice clothesline by Spears. What about the what about the laughing at him on the way to the ring? You missed all that bit out. He literally thought he was just a laughing stock. Just well, no, Sean Spears is playing that gimmick now, isn't he? No, but mate, look, looking at that guy, though, he was like... Yeah, no, I know what you mean, definitely. Like, he's playing that whole putting people over, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But still, like, it was just funny, man. It was, it was worth... I'm, I'm not going to say any more for the rest of the blog. Breeze. I got magical powers, man. And the Undertaker. Um, yeah, basically. So yeah, that match is shit. It's a squash match. <laughs> I've got a nice clothesline by Spears. And then the finish. So if you've got any more notes, we're going to have gone, brother. And freeze. Nope. <laughs> um, fast next whip from uh, John Spears. Pulled it, rotated him round fast as fuck. It looked like his neck tweaked a little bit. It did get a moment, that one. 
Did another one. Give him a free shot and almost got pinned. Running C4 for the finish. Spears yeah. man of the match. Spears man of the match. Zero moments for me. One moment for me. And like I said, it was that whip over neck thingy. Yeah. Where so next week, uh, so we have promo next. The next week, which is the other half of the TNT quarterfinal tournament, being Kip Sabian versus Dustin Rhodes. Should and be a decent. Should be a decent match. Versus Sammy Guevara, correct? Yes. Is that, is that correct? Because I'm Sammy G. Sammy G. V. Darby, Kip Sabian v. Dustin. Yeah. Okay, I, I think I said them the wrong way around, but either no, way, that was it. That is that. Kip Sabian. And then, you have um, Jimmy think. Havoc versus Orange Cassidy. I have Orange no Cassidy. idea. I have no idea. But go on. <laughs> it's been advertising that if you don't watch the blogs, you're a fuck, bitch. You have yeah. to look at the and if we get it and wrong, it's because we're drinking and smoking. Get over it. Um, next week, as well, we have Jimmy Havoc versus Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy making his Dynamite debut. I like that. I think that's a good Is match. Is that true? Yeah. I thought he made his own. I thought he uh, fought Pac on Dynamite. Nope. Well, that dark, was it? No, that was Revolution. Oh, aye. Right. Yeah. Too true, Blue. Okay. I didn't cock uh, that. Uh, Brody Lee. We'll hear from Brody Lee, and Brody Lee will be in action. AKA, Brody Lee will do a promo, and then he'll squash someone. Yeah. So, Shug D's going to get fucked up next week. Or one of the other people we have mentioned. No, which should, should they have been fucked up by him yet? Uh, Pineapple Pete, brother. Pineapple Pete shall meet the feet of Brody Lee. Kenny Omega in action next week as well. Which again means he's going to be fighting should be or another nobody. Yeah. Either should Pete or, or um, D Pineapple. <laughs> but uh, next on the agenda, are you done with all the matches promos? Yeah. Yeah. Next, we had uh, another voting blog by uh, uh, Thompson. Who from uh, MMA Bellator. Yeah. Uh, he went for Hager. My bad. Obviously, again, like I said, that's been the pattern. If you're from MMA, you bet Hager. If you're from wrestling, you bet Mox. Mox. Yes. Unless you're in a circle. Yes. Which the next one was Santana from the Inner Circle, who went for Hager. So, uh, yeah, it was 7-5. The voting was 7-5 in favour of Hager. <laughs> um, yeah, but five of them are Bellator fighters, and two of them are in a circle. Mm. So. <laughs> yes, very unbiased. Very, very... That's almost like sticking Scorpio Sky in an SEU match to be a referee, man. Almost, Working yeah. Out. Almost, almost! But then... Almost. Uh, Wait, one, two. The man! I can't get the head motions right when he times it. I just can't do it. No, I know that, but like, like if if it was like John Moxley, I know that I can just watch your face go red until, and then I can judge when you finish. Like, but when you go main event of the, I don't know when you're gonna go the evening. Do you know what I mean? So I just look, I just look like a pillow. When we're in the same room, you can at least just sit, sit there and watch me properly. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, what is the main event of the evening? It is Jake Hager of the Inner Circle versus John Moxley of his Honest Todd. Um, what In a No Holds Bad empty arena match. I forgot to mention that. For yeah. the AEW World Heavyweight Championship of the world. Of the world. Um, yeah, started off like an MMA match. Strange. Don't enjoy our own commentary for this one. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll get on to that towards the end. Um, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a bit, bit of a strange one. This was man, legit MMA yeah, match off, kind of start. Very, it started off very old school amateur wrestling. Yeah, but aimed like an MMA. Yeah. You know, it was like centralized, central, centralized around like taking like a leg out or grabbing a limb or grabbing an armbar or something like that. Like, I mean, it was, it was, yeah. it was almost trying to be 
like Chucky TV's Kip Sabian in that technicality, but which it, it failed miserably. If, if that's what they were going for, it failed miserably. Big time. Very much. I think if that's what they were going for, yes, it did fail. Not more like a, a Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle. A Brock, no, not Brock Lesnar, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe. In TNA. Yeah. When they used to do the UFC. There, the, yeah, there wasn't enough energy there for that. I, I see what you're saying. Like, I didn't feel the energy from this match at all, see? Well, that's what I'm saying. It failed when Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle did it. Yeah. Because they're not MMA fighters, they're wrestlers. Yeah. Yeah. So when we're expecting to see a wrestling match and you give us MMA, we're yeah. not interested. There was a good, there was a good bit of psycholo psychology uh, during it though. Like, um, like, no, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a bad match. It was just no, it wasn't a bad match. It just, it was a bit stale. It was a bit stale. Match. A lot of social media agrees with your comments on this, from what I've read. Yeah. A lot of people were down on it. Yeah, I've not, I've tried not to read any, any news, social media, anything like I made today. I don't before Dynamite. It's like we're doing it today. I watched the first thing in the morning. Mm hmm. Obviously, I've had time to have a look at the news and yeah, and digest, yeah, big stuff. And there's been you know, um, not a lot of hate, but a lot of uh, I expected better. Yeah, yeah. From this. No, I, I, I just didn't feel it from the off man. Like, like straight away, mate. As soon as they started MMA, in, it was just like, oh come on, that's just. My missus, my missus was like, ah, this is shit. Yeah. It's like, like, I don't this before. like this is a Moxie. Expect it from Hager, man, but not from Mox. Yeah, it's like it started off in an MMA match. Mox got him in, got Hager with a legitimate leg takedown. There was a legitimate one there to start off, and then then it went a bit Pete Tong like. Do you know what I mean like? It's like it was a nice counter from Mox into the armbar. Yeah. To, yeah. Again to start off straight away. Uh, Mark Mox then going for his leg again, and it was almost like. It was almost like Hager was like playing with his kids. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like he went down for his leg and he was kind of, I think Mox went down and, and like kind of looked up as though to say like, why haven't you gone down? And he's like, because you, you're grabbing my shoe. Do you know, like it just felt very stiff, very wrong. Not, not like um, Jake Hager was, knows what he's doing in an MMA fight. Yeah, he wouldn't he allow him to take him down. And, and, and Moxie was playing a wrestling match trying to be MMA. Yeah. It's like, I, I, I did think very similar thoughts as that when he did go for his leg in, in this moment. Like, as he went down, and it was almost like he expected him to take it like a wrestling move. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, is that what you kind of was yeah. summing up, man? Yeah. But it's like, it didn't. He didn't go down. He just stood there. And then it was only because Moxen, like, went over and put his leg around the other one that Hager leant forward. Yeah. And dropped down. Like, and it was like, oh, come on, boys. Like, do you know what I mean? come on. It's like, uh, I, I thought we would have like, went. Not like Hager thought that Moxley knew how to MMA wrestle. Yeah, maybe. But it might may, it might be in the case that Hager's like, well, you're just grabbing my shoe. Like, I'm not going to fall over if you're just grabbing my shoe. You know, he was stood there for a long time, mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, you know, that's the problem, though, Just isn't it? sweeping his arm around. I realise... Like, if that was me and you, we would know after two seconds. Either you fall, or I'm, I'm going to... I'm gonna push my thumb in one of your muscles to make you fall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it, it, yeah, you you could see that. I, I felt that. Do you know what I mean? Um. Yeah. Hager just stood there, though, man. It was strange. Um, yeah. Yeah, but what I said about uh, there being a bit of psychologicalness in this match. It was an MMA match, and they kind of they refrained from hitting each other. Too much. They didn't punch or kick or knee or anything yeah. like that. There wasn't any strikes per se. Amateur wrestling more. Yeah. MMA. But the first person to throw a fist was Jake Hager. Mm -hmm. So I don't like the psychological of that. Does it show? You know, is that showing? Oh, Mox has got in his head there because he could he could keep up with him, even though even though the whole takedown botch was a bit shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, like I felt like that, and I then they they. It was like losing his, his frustration like yeah yeah losing his concentration losing his like what his focus is you know I think it was portraying that but um what was I going to say then uh yeah they, they carried on wrestling for a little bit they carried on doing the MMA sorry and then Hager kneed him on the floor yeah and he like 
was portrayed like he was winded. Do you know what I mean? Again, it just yeah. it all seemed a bit false. You know what I mean? Yeah, it felt it did felt it felt like they were trying to put on an MMA match. Yeah, yeah. Which is not what you want, like at all. No, like, because MMA is MMA is real. That's all part <laughs> of it. Yeah, it's like I, I, not to say wrestling isn't real. But the whole point of it, MMA is pure physical fighting. Yeah. It so is, trying, trying that, to hurt your opponent. You're not going to see your opponent after being fucked up. It's like, look at that bird the other day. I can't remember what her name is, but she came out of it looking like the elephant man. She's going to be wrestling for yeah. a while. She's going to be... Like, she looks like a slash between the elephant man and E.T. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. E.T. a dealer, actually. I mean, she could be that person on the poster. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you wouldn't see that person fighting again, you know? And this touches on the whole Ronda Rousey thing at the moment as well, like, you know what I mean? But... Yeah. Anyway, let's let's not get too much into it because you know let's let's get this match out of the way. Um, yeah, yeah. Mox throws Hager up the uh, out the ring. Hager kind of overstepped his landing and kind of not boulders into the guardrails, but he kind of like stumbles into the guardrails. I thought, oh fucking yeah. hell, man, he threw him a bit hard. You like Jimmy? Yeah. It looks it looks a lot harder though because there's no crowd there. Yeah. Well, Jim so Ross pointed down it, didn't he? They go way backwards. Normally, they only go back a foot. Now they go back five foot. Like. Yeah. But it's probably because of that, because he pushed it like six or seven foot. Mm. It was like, oh, he's, he proper lost his foot in here, like, do you know what I mean? But I thought, uh, he, I thought he was going to go down quite hard in that point, like. Um, but an, another point on the whole MMA part. Uh, John Moxley's on the outside, um, just outside the ring, and he's, like, wrapped around his leg, and Hager's, like, hammer fisting him. He's like, yeah. bang, it's like, it looked so weak. You're going well beyond me now, bro. You're on about when they're in the crowd arena, innit? No, when they're, they're literally just outside the ring. So Hager gets chucked out. Okay. Yeah, Hager gets chucked out, and then he's he's on the mat, and Hager, like, it kind of goes a bit slow for a little bit, and Hager just kind of, just starts, just starts pounding on his face. But yeah. it, it's like soft. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like really soft, like, do you know what I mean? And it just, it looked so false. Like, if he was... Like, I, I've watched a couple of MMA matches. I know you, you have yourself, like, I mean, like, if you were going to be hammer fists by somebody in the position that Mox was, the way they filmed it, you would have nothing left to your face. <laughs> Honest to God. His face was completely unprotected. Do you know what I mean? And it, it was just, again, ah, oh, come on, boys. Do you know what I mean? It's as well. Like, you can, you can get away with it if you were filming Dessa Rhodes doing that. But Maybe, because yeah, because they're wrestlers and you don't you don't believe it. But think he goes a legitimate MMA fighter. Yeah. Exactly. And, they, and they, they exposed that well well before this match. Yeah. I think there was there was two options for it. Either the spot either the spot happens and they're two wrestlers. Even though Jake Hager is a wrestler. Do you know what I mean? First yeah. first and foremost, over MMA, he's a wrestler. Well technically. Yeah. But um yeah, two wrestlers or the MMA fighter doesn't use hammer fists. Yeah. Because, honest to God, mate, hitting someone with their outside of your palm like that, ah, boom, 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 it's, it's damage, mate. It's damage all day long. You know? No, I'm not saying, I'm saying do it for entertainment sake. I'm no, I know. I know. I... the fact that you could get away with it maybe if it was Destin Rhodes or Kip Sabian doing it. Because it's a wrestler. Because it's Drake Hager doing it, you're expecting. Yeah. Exactly my point. Exactly my point. But uh, yeah, anyway, moving on, you know, I just wanted to touch on that a little bit. Um, yeah, um, then then they got this... fighting on the concrete. Yeah. So over to you, brother. What the fuck, man? How much dead silence have we got to have on this blog? Backdrop onto the concrete by Hager. Simple move, but painful as fuck on pure concrete. Yeah. You know that. That's where you toss him over the top. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Next thing I got is the figure four. Yeah. Over on the, the uh, four, uh, on the crowd, crowd arena. Yeah, on the stairs. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. They should do that more often when there's people there. Yeah. Or Mox should as a as a staple of his moves. That'd be cool. Yeah. You know, maybe not every week because we don't want to see it oversaturated, but. Every now and again, no. take a take a fan, take a wrestler into the crowd, just wrap them around the bars. As we say, Edgar. Say what? Take the video yeah, yeah. So I label it the Spinal Tap. Mm. Yeah. 
Um, stick eyes, stick eyes on the top rope of the guardrail by Hager. I like that. Because mm. you only normally the snake eyes is literally only used in the in the ring, like. Yeah. It's on the outside. It was nice. I thought. Uh, Hager jumps off the top rope and uh, Mox catches him into a DDT. Is this in, in back in the ring now? Is it? Yeah. 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 Um. I don't know where I've got. I don't know where this is in relevance to the match. Uh, but Moxley does a running knee like a V trigger type thing yeah. for Hager. Didn't didn't sell well for me. I I thought it was completely out of sorts for Mox. I don't know if he does any running knee strikes to the face, but it like as high as he jumped. Does... No, he doesn't, does he? No. It just seemed really. it seemed completely out of character. Yeah. You know. Um, nice gut wrench power bomb by Hager. Then. Yeah. Um, Mox shows that he hurt his arm in that point, I think. He was pretending that he hurt his arm. Love him. I think, um, you know where they put the chair in the corner of the ring? Yeah. It went in the corner of the rug, and, uh, was it, um... I got quite a few more notes before that. Alright, fair enough. I got a Hager locking in the choke, uh, from where Mox tried to roll him over with his head. I thought that was brilliant, man. The way he like he, he rolled him completely over and locked him up. Yeah. That yeah, was that was, nice. that was beautiful from Hager, man. Fair play to him. Um, Mox bit Hager's arm to get out of the lock. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't notice that. Didn't you? They made a big yeah. thing of that, man. Like, like the commentary, all of them, all of Jim Ross on his own went really, really quiet. Wrestler. Huh? Yeah, man. Wrestler. Have a look. They landed on the TV. <laughs> no, I can't, bro. Don't work. You got any? It sucks. Have you not? Have you not got any? I've got, I got plenty. They just in the other room. <laughs> ah. Well, we're almost over with this match, anyway, man. Yeah. Um. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Yeah. Mox, Moxie bit him, and Hager was like, "Ah, he bit me. He fucking bit me." I think he actually swore, and they bleeped it. Uh, yeah, they did. And then, then I've got the chairs. Chair set up in a corner. Mox running headfirst into it. Weak as fuck. Yeah. Shit. Poor. It looked real weak. Yeah. Real weak, and I was so disappointed in both people for that. Chair. Hager he missed time to throw. Yeah. And Mox, because do you know what? You're John Moxley, brother. You're yeah. a hardcore wrestler. Should have taken it harder. Just to take a little ditty shot like that, you should just run. Mm. Like, and I hate to say that about wrestlers because. You know, we shouldn't expect them to, like... No, take but... But his arms were up. It was such a light shot. His arms were up anyway. He just needed more force. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know? Yeah. Well, wasn't it? Like, we both know it. Like, it was yeah. bad. It was, yeah. It was, it was not a great outing for Mr. Moxley this evening. Um, The chair from... um, The chair from Hager to Mox's ankle was good. Yeah. Thought that was good. He sold that well, you know? Well, Hager sold, sold it well, or executed it well, yeah, and then obviously. And straight into the ankle lock. I was just going to say, which you would do. I think suits him. Yeah. Doesn't suit every wrestler. Ooh. Huh? That's always been this move, bro. Oh, is it? Yeah. Tidy. Good. Probably suits him. I hate it beginning because they sat Kurt Angle and then they gave him the, the ankle lock straight away. But like he's, a, so. he's an amateur wrestler, like you expect him to have it, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well. Yeah, I know, but that's the thing. Like, they sat Kurt Angle, up, and then he was like the next guy straight away. Like, so you're always going to have that heat. Yeah, yeah. Well, like when, 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 when people did the cross face when when Benoit did, was gone. Like, did he? Mean? Was he? Was he the first person after Kurt Angle? The very first person. In WWE, yes. That might be some good good drama for AEW to use here, mate. Do you know what I mean, good bit of history there. But I think it suits him. Um, yeah, moving on. Low blow to Moxley. Yeah. Which, by the way the Mox reacted after the match, really caught him. <laughs> to the point that he said to the referee... <laughs> yeah, he said to the referee, well, what happens if I lose a fucking bollock? Um, yeah, chair to the face, then a DDT on the chair to finish the match. Paradigm shift for a bit. Quite Para- what it is. Paradigm shift. Okay, then it was a paradigm shift, but it was it was definitely just a kind of shitty DDT. It was really a dirty deed. 
Yeah, it was just a shitty DDT. WWE star. But, um, yeah, not a great match, in my opinion. Overhyped. Definitely overhyped. Overhyped. There was there was some good moments in it, but there was nothing nothing like it should have been. Like it was anywhere in the arena. Yeah. They didn't go anywhere in the arena. They did. They went all around the crowd area. They went like outside the ring in the crowd bit. They didn't go up the stairs. They didn't go out the back. They didn't go anywhere. They didn't. They didn't go up the stairs. Huh? That's where the figure four was. Yeah, at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah, right at the bottom of the yeah. stairs. Yeah, I know, but... but it's like, like I, I don't like making comparisons too much, right? But the, the last man standing match, mm-hmm. yeah, went a lot of places, didn't it? It went a lot of places. Yeah. It was AEW's opportunity to do the same. But at the same time, I think, right? Again, I think two things. This was a rushed up match. Mm-hmm. Because they weren't sure. No, this was filmed three weeks ago, bro, in Daly's Palace. Exactly, bro. It was filmed three weeks ago, so it was rushed. Okay. Because they weren't sure. Because let's be fair, if this wasn't going on the epidemic, then it wouldn't have been like that. Yeah. So it was rushed out because they weren't sure if they were going to be able to film it. Yeah. So they promoted so much stuff, like blood and guts, stuff like that, which they haven't been able to fulfill. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, not, not on their, their fault, which is the way... Life is at the moment with yeah. the pandemic going on, so they had to put this match up. Yeah. Whether whether anyone liked it or not, they had to put this match up. Yeah. And I think it was rushed up. I really do. I generally think it was rushed out and probably boxing went a bit and went right. All right, then we'll do a bit of MMA, MMA thing because you're hot on MMA right now. Yeah. Even though I don't really know what I'm doing, I'll I'll just try it. It didn't work well at all. No, it didn't. No, no, nobody thinks it did. Really, no. to be honest, it failed miserably, man. So I like I'm I'm mate, I'm I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that I feel that way because I want it. I want it to be a successful thing, like all the time. That's the time bro. That's the, this is what it is. It's trial and error, bro. WWE did the same thing. Like, I mean, trial and error. Do you know what I mean, we're not WWE. We can't. They can't. We do. don't want to be like WWE if they treat their staff like they do. But anyway, right then, come on in. Moving on. Uh, who was your man of the match? Uh, Mox. Mox? Yeah. Mine was Hager. Mine was Hager. Even though I did, I did, uh, well, I didn't really diss on him. I dissed more on Mox in his match. And you did. Yeah. But, um. You know, but the only reason I went with Mox, because I went with, as a wrestler match, I thought Mox controlled it better. I yeah. Thought That's valid. Jack, I thought Jack Hager did the MMA thing a bit too much. Yeah. That's, that's that was it. That was literally it. Yeah. Yeah, I know they should have had his brother in there, Jake. Should have a bit of a swagger going on, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a little bit, a little less of the Jack and Coke. Um, you said you were going to say something about JR, and you didn't. So what was I will know. Yeah, I've written it at the end of my thing. I've written it at the end. Uh, JR's Ross. J, J, JR's Ross. J, Jim, Jim Ross. Jim Ross. Absolute terrible, mate. He, he like. I feel like a lot of this match could have been better if it had Jericho and Chavon, or if it had Excalibur and something. Yeah, I genuinely do, mate. I think the one-man commentary on this... I did, I did not... I, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. I really right. am. Do you want me to get my balls Sorry. out? Sorry. So you can suck them? Huh? Do you want me to get my balls out so you can suck on them? I would, but they're the size of Maltesers, so there's no point. <laughs> He's been watching. He's been watching on the monitor. No, mate, honest to God, the one-man commentary, I think, no matter who it was... Like, he didn't do bad at the commentary. Like, he nailed everything. I think the commentary sucked. One-man commentary was shit. It, it was stale. Yeah. It made it so stale. There was no... Yeah. There was no reaction and reaction. Do you know what I mean, lads? Exactly. You know what I mean? And it, no crowd and no, no... Yeah, exactly. No reaction to yeah. reaction. Because, that honestly, mate, right? Honestly, there was, there was good enough stuff in the match to get a reaction... But it all sold very poorly because there was no reaction. I think, Do you know I what I mean? It would have been better if they had kept it the same and had wrestlers in the crowd still. Yeah. Yeah. At that point, and, though, they weren't allowed. Uh, well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. It was a daily pass one. But, um, yeah, it, it just. It, like, Jim Ross didn't do I'm bad. Not JR, but I no, think JR I'm not. Was, I thought JR, for me, on that, was 
on point. He couldn't have done any better with what he was dealt with. No, he couldn't have, mate. And it's like, but I. Either. There was no, no, he didn't. And I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from Jr. But I think the fact that it was the one-man commentary with just Jr. took loads away from the match. Loads. Yeah, he definitely did the match. You know, it made it, it made it more stale. It wouldn't have been so bad if there were wrestlers in in the crowd. Maybe, but it, it was just there, too much dead air, mate. No reaction. There was no reaction, and there was no. Uh, bias or uh, backlash. There was no reaction. That's what I'm saying. There yeah. was no reaction, so there was no backlash. Yeah, exactly. And it just, it, it was too stale. It's too stale. Yeah. The whole thing was stale, didn't work. But it is what it is. You know, in the times we're in, like we always put as the excuse that is making things bad or good at the moment. It's not the excuse, it is what it is. Well, it, it is what it is, but it's the, it is the excuse, though, isn't it? It's like, they don't need to put on bad shows because they've got... It's like, no, I'm, not I'm, being, not, I'm not being I'm funny, not, mate. Hold on a minute, I'm not, I'm not being funny. That's Hager and Mox. They're two big wrestlers. They could have got... They could have done that better. Yeah, but again, like I said, and uh, if, if, they, if they were given this storyline now, they probably would have pulled off a better match. But you got to remember, this at this point, they were like that. Right then, we got to film out six weeks now. Still, maybe, maybe they were caught. Maybe they were caught at that point when it was like, right, we got to panic, because everything seemed to have leveled out a little bit now with recording and stuff like that. So maybe it was in the panic point. Remember, in 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 these times, right, there was like six shows being recorded in one night. Yeah. So what felt fresh wasn't fresh anymore. I got that. So when it came, came to, you got you remember when it came to the actual match, at that point. Mox might have already fought three times. Hager might have already fought three times. Yeah. That time. And there was no reaction which you normally graph. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. So, as well, when, they, when you do it within the space of six hours, like, say, this is an example, when me and you freestyle. Yeah. Free, free, so freestyle! Back in the day, it felt fresh. Yeah. Then you listen to the tape back in the day, and we were freestyling about the same subject all night, mm. almost. Yeah. I get I that, mean, mate. I understand that, but still, you're not going to. Why, why are you trying to convince me? There's no point in convincing me. That's my opinion. There's Dorsey's opinion. Great. Let's move on. So after the match, uh, Mock says. I'm going for tea. After the match, let's finish this off. Mock says, uh, "Right in the balls." Basically, right in the balls. He shouts out uh, from the low blow. Then says to the ref, what is if I lose a bollock? Um, finished quick. It, it was a, over a bit too quick. There was two minutes remaining on TV. Which is not usually yeah. like them. Normally, yes. On point. Job done, like. Do you know I mean? Mock seemed to be filling at the end, like. Now you can go for a week. Actually, what would you rate the show? What would you rate the shows? Well, we haven't got Man of the Match or nothing, yeah? Oh. Yeah, we have. We done man of the match. You said mocks. Oh, we didn't. Oh, yeah. We didn't do moments. We didn't do moments. I got one moment. Three. Yeah. But, uh, that's it. Moments. Ha! Oh, you finally frozen. On to the news. Uh, this week. We do have quite a bit of news. I've got news all over the fucking shop. I wrote it on one page, then wrote it in the second page by accident, then I went back to the other page. So I got almost a full page, but obviously Dorsey's correlates with what mine is. So, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get into the news just as soon as this motherfucker is back. Come on, motherfucker. Come on, motherfucker. Come on, motherfucker. Jesus Christ. Come on! Come on! Come on, motherfucker! <laughs> we're on 155 at the moment. But we're, there, we're on to the news. I've already done the introduction. Let's just go for this shit. I'll go first, shall we? Yeah, man. Uh, the Revival have been released from their contract. We all knew this. We all knew this for a whole week. Um, this literally happened after we finished the last blog. It was like the first bit of news I read. So, uh, yeah, the Revival have been released from their contracts. Yeah. Um, Randa Rosey caused a storm with Ponca podcast interview and then tweets after saying wrestling is fake and I don't want to perform for these 
crappy fans anymore. A lot of backlash off this one. A lot of backlash. And it's going to cause a lot of backlash because of what it is. You know? But, uh, yeah, Booker T's chimed in on it. Um, for some reason, that's the only one that's in my head at the moment. But a lot of people have chimed in. It's the only reasonable response, that's why. No, there's a lot of them that chimed in, mate. A lot of them. I know, I know, but Booker T is the only one who has a valid response for me. Yeah. I don't know. He's the only one I haven't read, actually, funny enough. Um, it, he basically said you were open to, even though you ain't what you ain't in MMA, it's a different world. You were opened into wrestling. You were on a part time contract. You cried about it. And. Basically, you should be thankful for what you were given in a company, which is world class, and you didn't earn it, yeah. really. You went in another sport, you didn't earn it here. Yeah. If you were open with Walker Mams, and for you to say that is completely not disrespecting you should apologize. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. But yeah, there's going to be um, either a good shoot or a very bad promo PR person that's on Ronda Rousey's side. I see a punk put it on it and he said he fucking loves it. Yeah, so it's not I see that one. <laughs> it's not going to end up good. Yeah. But either way, it's going to be golden. It's a car crash to watch. I remember he was one of them. But uh, yeah, moving on. Next bit of news: WWE announces someone on screen, uh, someone that is a not on screen talent. Uh, sorry, that is an on-screen talent, but not part of the active roster, has coronavirus. Don't know who that is. Speculation is that it's uh, Dana Brooke. Yes. But I don't know. Don't know. I've read that as well. Dana Brooke or uh, cameraman. Yeah. So, next bit of news. Um, Impact Rebellion pay-per-view. Which was originally scheduled to be like a separate pay per view event, separate to Impact. It's gone in, it's been rescheduled and it's going to be filmed in a two week segment of two weeks of Impact. Okay. So, like in the past, they did before, before the pandemic, they've done pay per views as Impact specials. They're going back to that format, basically. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Uh, what else we got? Double or Nothing has been postponed, possibly. Then the news changed that it is now going ahead, which is nice to see. Yeah. Especially since they haven't got Donald Trump in their pocket. Yeah, I know. I know. You know, having to do it the legitimate way. <clears throat> um, Taz is doing uh, move breakdown videos, which is already evident. We've seen it on Dynamite. Uh, we did discuss whether or not we should keep it in the news, but we kept it in the news because we thought it was a good thing and a big thing that people should know about. So, yeah, Taz is doing breakdowns of people's moves on a weekly basis. Uh, next bit of news from you. Uh, AEW uh, Wrestling. Uh, the Rock says he watches AEW and he's enjoying it. Big up The Rock. The Rock says... Thanks, Dwayne. Bit of news, MJF. All right, enough, enough, man. We got to keep these videos short. Jesus Christ, Dozzy's had too much tequila. Um, MJF charging five hundred dollars for cameo appearances. Cameo is like um, it's like a web thing that they're doing at the moment. All the wrestlers that are like not wrestling and now they can like send messages and shit. Yeah. Most, most people are like charging like a hundred dollars. Some of them are charging twenty dollars. MJF five hundred dollars. After they hit mainline mainline news that that was happening, he put it up by a hundred dollars. So now MJF charges five hundred. Yeah. Huh? One thing again. Yeah, carry on. Five hundred ninety nine dollars now for a cameo from MJF. One thing MJF as well. Um, I know we're gonna talk about this later. The last superstars released, but um, I haven't written this on. That's why I'm jumping in now. Uh, MJF picked up EC three. And said, well, out of all the wrestlers that have been released recently, 
I'd love to see uh, an EC3 versus Salt of the Earth or some cross of paths. Because of all the people that have been released, he is a guy that I think has been underutilised and yeah. deserves a shot. That's, that's nice of him to say, mate. My, m what my missus Lily was, they're not going to be able to have them two together, are they? And it's like, well, yeah. No, no, they wouldn't be able to. They wouldn't be able to exist together. It's like, oh yeah, well, one of them would run one end of the company, the other one would run the other end of the company. Do you know what I mean? That's all. And then eventually their their egos would bend paths. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah, nice. What's your next bit of news? Because I think I was uh, on the tail end of mine, then, wasn't I? Yeah, it was. Um, Rusev pledges twenty grand. Nice, this is nice. Twenty dollars. Sorry, twenty. Twenty thousand dollars. And this guy has just been released from his contract. Yeah, just been released from his WWE contract to any WWE talent that isn't being paid. So, awesome. Rusev Day. Yeah, Rusev, Rusev, Rusev Day. Day. Rusev, Rusev Day. Rusev Day. Big up. Um, next bit of news. Bret Hart says that Hulk Hogan pressured WWE for him to lose the title at WrestleMania 9. Which doesn't sound surprising at all. So. It's not surprising at all. No. I, I kind of knew that anyway. Yeah. Next one. As Hulk Hogan is a cunt. Yep. He's your favourite wrestler, though. But Hart is, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Come on, then, moving on. Um. Obviously, save, save the uh, last bit till last if you run out yeah. of news. All in challenge. I'm not sure about this. I haven't done too much research on it. There's. I've heard of it. Don't know. Going around, and the Undertaker signed up to it. So that's the only reason it's in my news. I don't know. I think a load of celebrities are doing it. Yeah. But I got spotted on it because the Undertaker's doing it. Which is very rare for the Undertaker to do something personal. I don't know who the Undertaker yeah. is, mate. Mark, Mark Callows. Callaway. Yeah, Callaway. Mark. Yeah. Yeah, Mark Callows. So basically, if you win the round. <laughs> Mark Callows, you're fucking The Undertaker turns up. Yeah. To the house, to your house in, in the sticky gear and answers all your wrestling questions. Tidy. Uh, the winner of the raffle, that's that, and all the proceeds to the raffle go to people who need a food during the pandemic, which is obviously a good cause. Very good cause, very good cause. Uh, next bit of news Ric Flair said the only reason he went to TNA was because of money. What a prick. Moving on. <laughs> no, I think that's Cundy. Do you mean, he, what? like. There's no mention well, of no pride and... He was going bankrupt. Yeah, it was fucking shit, though, man. Next bit of news. And that's when he left, he had £8,000. Or £800,000 to get him out of debt. Okay. Next bit of news. Um, Jeff Hardy is on the last Jewish contract. Yep. Mark Earing... They're going to give him a monster push, like a world title push, uh, to keep him away from AEW, basically. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, next bit of news. Uh, DDP allows Jake Roberts to move back into his house after he quarantined in a hotel for two weeks. Which is good bit yeah. There was a lot of tweets going out. Uh, uh, he put tweets out that he was lonely and yeah. stuff as well. Looking like suicidal. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why it's a good bit of news, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And uh, big up DDP all, all day long. I, I've always been a big fan of DDP of a, as a wrestler, but he seems like a good guy as well. Mm. Generally, he seems to help out Heart in the right place, like. Yeah. 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 Next bit. Um, so, the next bit of news is what we've both got. Right, I got, a, I got a few more then to run through in a minute. Uh, Nia Jack threatens Ronda Rousey on Twitter after what she says, which we've already touched on. She says she'll knock it out, uh, will jeopardise her job. She, she, a, she basically says she doesn't give a fuck about her job. She'd knock her out in the ring live on TV, which, yeah. you know what? If it's true... Big up Nia Jax. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I thought you were going to say whatever you were going to say anyway. No, I agree, basically, what you, because of what you said, basically. Yeah. But if it's all true, if it's not kayfabe... Yeah, exactly. If, it, if it's a shoot, yeah. if it's a shoot, great. Um, yeah. Ryback tries to rally WWE wrestlers to boycott WWE Live, which I think is probably the the most noble thing that the guy's ever done. 
But you're still yes. not going to get signed to AEW, prick. No. Hopefully. All impact. Hopefully. All impact, yeah. Uh, Rick Steiner's son is on the radar of promotions, being AEW and WWE. I can't remember his name, but his last name is Rick Steiner. <laughs> his last name is Rick Steiner. Just... His last name... Uh, Rick Steiner's... Rick Steiner's son... Yeah. His last name is Rick Steiner, but it's spelt like German, like R E I. Say again. It's double vowel name, like my daughter's. It's a no, it's a full name, but it's like almost I don't know, I don't know what it is, mate. But his last name is Rick Steiner. Oh, it's like David John Rick Steiner. Okay. It's not like David Rick Steiner. It's Rick Steiner, or Rich Steiner. It's definitely something close to that. But anyway, I'm yeah, dawdling like fuck on the news. Right, let's move on. Right, Taz and Excalibur to do live recap shows of Dynamite after every show. Yeah. I think that's very cool. Uh, Jesus Christ, I've got so much news. Um, AB, Amy Weber, or Weber, says that she was harassed by Edge and Orton. That's why she left WWE. Apparently, one of them poured bo a bottle of water over her face while she was sleeping. And the Orton. Uh, Jerry Lawler's being racist again. But it's okay. It's okay, though, because uh, WWE edited the footage out. The footage out. Uh, Christian says that he he was looking to get mentally, medically cleared, but he probably will not get that. Uh, quite a big bit of news. Ticketmaster changed their policy on refunds due to the coronavirus, and they are now refusing to give anybody their money back, which is pretty fucking weak. Yeah, fuck Ticketmaster. That is pretty fucking weak. But there's a good, there's good enough places out there now at the moment to buy tickets that you know you can bypass her. Uh, Jim Cornette has trademarked his own name. Why? I don't know. No idea. Uh, and then we are at where we are at. But I think we'll keep it short because we'll we'll touch on everything, but we'll keep it short because we're going to do uh, what we what we call a ten minute talk, which is basically going to be our subject that we get a little bit heated on. So. Which I think might go a little longer, so we're going to call it a quarantine talk. So, uh, yeah, what's the last bit of news on, brother? Well, it all comes down to, um, I'm going to start off. WWE, uh, it's a new filming live Raw and SmackDown and NXT shows, and are being called essential employees. Yes. And that is caused by Linda McMahon using $18.5 million for a Trump re-election campaign. Which is, a, in my mind, bribery. It is bribery, as a, as yeah. Um At the same time, the XFL has folded. Yeah. Which was Vince McMahon's secondary NFL league. That's folded. The second life has failed. Yeah. Just, he, he's declared bankrupt that they're bankrupt. And that's so Vince McMahon can avoid the repayments and the insurance policies and the sponsorships and whatever not this included in it. So he can get his money back. Which a lot of other people did invest and he's now now fucked them over. Yeah. So any more on that? Um well there is a bit more. Obviously WWE firing some staff and talent because they can't manage their money properly. Essentially. Yeah, so have you got a list of the talent, or do you want me to drag it out? No, I, well, we, we won't do that. We'll do it in a minute, man. Well, you yeah. you can. I um No, I haven't. It's on my phone. It's on my phone, man. I, oh, no, actually, i got a little list. Uh, the releases from WWE, due to the fact that WWE is plead, pleading poverty, essentially, as is follows. There are more, but this is my list. Uh, Gallows, Anderson, Kurt Angle, Rockstar Spud, which is Drake Maverick, uh, Kurt Hawkins, Leo Rush, Aiden English, Heath Slater, The Hurricane, Shane Helms, Lance Storm, Billy Kidman, Mike Rotunda, Pat Buck, Davari, Scott Armstrong, Sarah Stock, Fit Finley, EC3, Eric Young, uh, Rusev, I can't think of any more. But at the moment, they have all just been released, and that is big like yeah. big now after Wrestlemania every year they do get rid of a lot of staff yeah but that is big now the reason they're saying that they can't is because they haven't got the money 
Now, they've just bribed the President of the United States. 18.5 million. And they can't afford to pay their wrestlers. Now, Brock Lesnar... Brock Lesnar, yeah. get, get rid of him. Do you know what I mean? Like, there we are. Yeah. Don't sack 10 wrestlers and put their families on the streets. Sack Brock Lesnar, who doesn't need the money to eat. Fuck Vince. But yeah, uh, one more bit of news after this. If we're done with that, are you looking for the list? I've got a list already, bro. Go on then, rattle them out, man. I'm going to go for the leak, so uh, drag it out. So we've got Drake Maverick, Kurt Hawkins, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Keith Slater, Eric Pian, EC3, Leo Rush, Eric Rowan, Sarah Logan, Referee Mike Kiyoda, uh, Primo, Mike Canales, Maria Canales, Zach Ryder, No Way Home, Rusev, XC Performance, or Born Center, Bruno Perrazzo, Alexander. Alexander Jackson, Andre Jenkins, a steel coach, producers, Kurt Angle, Aiden English, Lance Storm, Shane Helms, Sarah Stock, Scott Armstrong, Billy Kidman, Fit Finley, Pat Buck, Sean Davari, Mike Retender, Andrea Blitzenberg, writer, Jerry Soto, Spanish language announcer. Is all of the people on the list that have been announced so far, as well as the revival, which were a bit premature the releases. So yeah, a lot of big time cuts, and also we lost Howard Pink on board, but Paul of Paper passed away today. R.I.P. Back. Um, back. Back. Yeah, so uh, a lot of people just lost their jobs. Yeah. Who'd you say R- R- R.A.P. to? Uh, Fink. Howard Fink. Yeah, that was my last bit of news, I was. So, uh, yeah. that's fine. I wasn't even here for this, for this fucking year. I didn't really know much about him, man. I know he's a legend. But, uh, yeah, rest in peace, Howard Fink. So, uh, yeah, that's um, that's everything now. We, we've covered now, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's the end of... That's the end of the Real Wrestling Show Das Blog. We didn't even do that at the beginning of this week. Das Blog! Das Blog! Um, yeah, uh, we don't share too much. We uh, we obviously tag each other in it so we can, you know, share to our friends or whatever. Um, we got the Real Wrestling Show Das Blog on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. So check any of those out. Interact, you know, come and drag us out. We don't give a shit. Um, yeah, thanks to everybody that allows us to share us on their pages. Um, likes, views, yeah, or even dislikes. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Th- th- thank you to anybody who's helped. You know, you know. Big up to you all. Uh, we do this every week, so check out of our our recent ones. We'll put them in the video. Don't know how to do that, so there's no point. Uh, just check them out. Just research. Uh, what? Check out the archives. We've been doing AEW since AEW existed. Yeah. Doing it from the beginning. Um, we do feel like every episode that we do, AEW then do something that we said the previous episode. But that's all good. We're all good. We could just be paranoid motherfuckers. But uh, yeah, thank you for uh, thank you for watching. If you got this far in the video, um, share it to a wrestling fan, to a you know, or anybody. Share it to your nan. We don't care. Um, comment in the comments underneath. And uh, yeah, that's about it, isn't it? Yeah. Bigger to all watching. Bigger to AEW fans. Bigger to wrestling. Uh, 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 u